TSA, the airline for California's frequent flyer. We have this opportunity to remind you that next Saturday afternoon we'll be up at Selen Arena, sellout crowd up there to watch the Bulldogs take on the Aggies of New Mexico State. By the way, Fresno State won last night, beating UOP at Selen Arena, 74 to 65. So the Bulldogs are showing a bit of a resurgence under Coach Ron Adams. I think so. Coach Adams thought they were much improved this year, and they're showing that. They even had a, a fairly tough game, played UNLV fairly tough down at the Thomas and Mack Center. Next season, I'm really going to miss Rod Tuller, coach at Utah State. He's also the athletic director at Utah State, and he announced officially this week, although it had been rumored for a month or so, that he was going to step down. He'll continue as the athletic director at Utah State, but the new basketball coach will be a fellow that played high school ball for Rod at Logan High, Con Smith, who was on Bobby Knight's staff for a couple of years. Yeah, we're looking forward to his program at Utah State, and, and I agree, Rod Tuller has always been very gracious, uh, Mike, to you and I, and always a pleasure to be around, and uh, he will be missed, but I'm glad he's still going to be around as the AD. And I want to pass along our best to Tom O'Neill, who was a class guy at UOP. He resigned last week, and Dennis Willens, uh, Dennis Willens is the interim coach at the University of Pacific. As soon as we get the 45-second shot, clock fixed we will be ready to go it said four seconds and uh, Tom Finkin said no that's not fair <laughs> he's right well we're all set to go now for UNLV it'll be Jarvis last night Carol Patio 16 first half points Clinton Rawson Carl James and Anthony Todd for Santa Barbara Brian Johnson Carrick DeHart who will inbound the ball Brian Shaw Gary Gray and Eric MacArthur 37-28, Santa Barbara trails UNLV. What Santa Barbara's going to have to do at some stage of this half is to come out. Now we got a malfunction on the shot clock once again. Tom Fink has One got it. One second ran off, and the shot clock shows five seconds. That's the quickest 40 seconds in the NCAA history. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we like to see a lot of action, but that's ridiculous. You can't make them shoot that quickly. Jerry Pym wants an explanation. I, I think Santa Barbara's got to get a run going here and get their fans and students back into this game. And uh, when they do that, they'll be okay. If they don't, UNLV could really blow them out here in the second half. Jerry Pym knows full well that there's a possibility circular. Pym, nine years as the head man at the University of Utah, and before that, he was an assistant at Utah, 13 years under Jack Gardner. So Jerry Pym has certainly paid his dues. He knows the game, he knows how to recruit, and he sure likes it being here in Santa Barbara. Who wouldn't? They like today. Like a picture postcard out there. Never seen the Pacific Ocean as blue as it is today. 37 to 28. Open is the heart. Chased down by Brian Shaw. He just out hustled Rossum for the ball. And the missed shot by Carrick DeHart. Santa Barbara shooting only 30% of the game. And MacArthur wanted a foul, but that's a bunch of nonsense. You gotta go up strong and put it in when you're underneath like that and you have his jumping ability. control of the ball and he slapped it he didn't shoot it he yeah. slapped it and it looked like he was almost shooting parallel or even down he was up so high 39 28 and 11 point UNLV lead Santa Barbara really needs a hoop and MacArthur had no chance at all of making that shot he wanted to be fouled and he was by Anthony Todd however MacArthur is not a good free throw shooter MacArthur is only 48% at the line. Well, they're struggling a little bit offensively. Character Hart comes out, misses a couple shots. You don't want to see that to your leading score. Now, all of a sudden, no one knows who's going to shoot. Brian Shaw is going to have to take over and handle the ball and create some shots of his own, set up from some for his teammates. The Gauchos have to go on the road next week. They will be at Utah State Thursday night. San Jose State a week from tonight, so that's a tough road trip. Yeah, big schedule difference in the rest of the year for both these teams. Santa Barbara's got to play a lot on the road. UNLV, they're going to camp out at home. Six of the last eight. UNLV at the Thomas and Mack Center. Free throw violation by UNLV, so McCarthy.
MacArthur will get a third chance. Patio and Bastide have scored 28 out of the 39 total for UNLV. And finally, MacArthur gets one to drop. 39 to 30. The Rebels are five out of six at the free throw line. Santa Barbara, seven out of 12. Inside the patio, foul against Gary Gray. Gray reaching over the top, trying to deny Todd the ball. Three fouls on the 6'9 freshman, Gary Gray. Foul number 35, Gary Gray. Ooh, we're looking at it again. It looks like he basically just hit the ball. First team foul for CSD. Booby James will inbound the ball for the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Last night, up in the air, and the court. Last night tries again. Deflected. Brian Johnson for Santa Barbara. And a foul against Carl James. That'll be his. It's on Carl James. That will be his fourth. Ooh, that was an unnecessary foul there. When you've got three in the game, I can't believe he did that. Carl can't either. Yeah, he's mad at himself right now. See, he just nudged him. Johnson's not going anywhere right there. He just no need to do that. Carl James will come out, replaced by Stacy Hoffman. Shaw to MacArthur. MacArthur has the puck all day long. UNLV has an 11-point lead. It's now down to eight. is being made by the public address announcer to the crowd not to throw debris onto the court. Yeah, Tark, uh, Gary Tarkane standing right in front of us and saying, hey, let's get a technical foul out there if they keep doing this. Last night, rejected by MacArthur. DeHart. Underneath, MacArthur scores it. That's what they need. They need a couple more plays like that. Now they got the crowd back in the game and they can make their run. And it was set up by a great defensive play by MacArthur. He has tremendous jumping ability. However, he has been under the weather this week. He's had some swollen glands and they did a test on him. They thought he might have mononucleosis. The test came back negative and he said he felt much better today. And he feels much better after making that basket. Patio for three. Ooh, is that a stopper? 42-33 UNLV. Patio, 19 points. Santa Barbara starting to come back, and then Patio deflates the Santa Barbara balloon. Johnson. Out the shot for three. Shaw, 13 points. And hasn't the three-point basket changed the game of college basketball? I love it. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? It's on patio. It's on patio. Good defense. Just closed off the baseline. Good solid defense. Nothing fancy there. I think Patio probably knows he did something wrong. He should have stopped right there. Just waited too long to stop. Two fouls on Gerald Patio. 42-36. Fast night with the steal. Blossom chases it down near the baseline. Oh, that's going to be, I think, on Gray. If it is, four. That'll be his fourth. Yeah, costly one. They're, they're spreading out, and I think they did that intentionally, Las Vegas. Smart play. They spread out the offense, and they said, we want you to post up against Gray. He's got to foul you. Otherwise, you're going to get the ball in there easily, and he fouled him. John Westbell replaces Gary Gray for Santa Barbara. So now Jerry Pimm's got to get a lot of strong effort out of Westbell. UNLV turns it over. That's the eighth UNLV turnover. Santa Barbara has turned it over eight times. It's a, it's, a, it's a strange team that can make turnovers like that 
and then they'll turn around and they'll make two or three great talented plays. And, and the credit, I think, goes to Jerry Tarkini. He hearts for three. Forty-two, thirty-nine. The heart has eight points. The crowd is back into it now. I'll say. Patio. Yeah. Oh, that one had snow on it. It was shot so high. Well, the man was all over him. He shot the ball a little higher so it wouldn't be blocked and still hit nothing but net. Twenty-two points for Patio is putting on quite a show. He hit seven three-pointers against Memphis State. See how many he's had today. He's had six today. Six three-point baskets by Patio. And Patio comes down with that missed shot. UNLV 45, Santa Barbara 39. The NCAA record, most three-pointers in a game, 17. UNLV had 16 this year. You know who holds the NCAA record at 17? Oklahoma. You are absolutely right. Go to the head of the class. That's nice. UNLV trying to post up. Wisely so. Good sound strategy. He gets double teamed in there, but there's a foul. UNLV 45, Santa Barbara 39. We'll be back after this break for our local station. Welcome aboard the Colorado Bell in Laughlin, Nevada, where colorful lights reflecting on the Colorado River capture the nostalgic magic of the gay 90s with fun and entertainment for the whole family. Enjoy water sports on the Colorado River. Rooms in the Colorado Bell and adjoining New Orleans Tower are spacious. Five distinctively different restaurants. There's great entertainment in the Riverboat Lounge and 24-hour action in the glittering casino. It's all at the Colorado Bell Hotel and Casino in Laughlin, Nevada. So the other car dealer told you that your credit is bad and you can't get a car? Well, you won't hear that here at Toyota of Pomona because your bad credit is okay credit here. There's absolutely no reason that your credit should be denied. There's no reason to be embarrassed. We understand you need a car, and that's why we'll send you home in a new or used car today. We've done it for hundreds all over Southern California with the most unique credit buyers program found anywhere. So don't worry. We'll reestablish your credit, and you'll get a new 88 Toyota or a fine used car now. Even if you've had a repossession, a bankruptcy, a charge-off, you've been turned into collections, you've had a judgment against you, you're new in town, new on the job. No credit or bad credit means we want you. It's simple. Bring in your last two paycheck stubs, your last two phone bills, proof of residency, cash down payment, or trade-in. Call us at 714-591-1851 or 818-331-4843. Toyota of Pomona. Look for the red and white blimp at Gary Avenue between the 60 and 71 freeways in Pomona. Remember, don't worry. We're here to help you. The three-point shot really makes it a different game. That it does. First of all, it opens up the whole court. And if you can hit it, Carrick DeHart can. You if you can shoot 40%, you should be taking it out there. That shows you what happened the last time those two got together, and that was the 7th of January. Yeah. And Patio is going crazy so far this afternoon. Most of them three-pointers. He is really putting them in. Six three-pointers by Daryl Patio. Ooh. And, of course, they're defensing him, too. And Shaw has four three-pointers. Be nice just to have kind of a shoot around between Shaw and Patio. Another idea for the PCA That's tournament. Right. A three-point contest at halftime. We could have the the shoot around at halftime. PCA Raycom halftime contest. 45-39. 15 minutes to go. Hawkman off the patio. Take it away. They try to get it down low to Bass Knight and MacArthur with his leaping ability. Stole it for Santa Barbara. Zone defense. And there is Carrick DeHart for three. Carrick DeHart, 11 points. You got Shaw has 13. You got to be quick to play zone and stop the three-point shot. 45-42, UNLV by three. Hartman off to Rossum. Rebound, Shaw. Down to DeHart. 
18 footer, no. Out it comes to Patio. And a foul whistled against Elliott of Santa Barbara. Oh, and Patio says, why'd you do that? I wanted to shoot the three pointer on the fast break. UNLV 45, UCSB 42. Last night will inbound the ball right in front of our Raycom location. Stacy Altman. The Rebels leading by three. Rossum. And Camuso has a foul away from play. This one's going to go against Santa Barbara. Let's see if we can see. Well, just a lot of holding, it looks like, there with uh, Bass Knight inside. Foul is on Eric MacArthur, his second. Bass Knight says, yeah, you got to call it, don't you? Where is it? Bass Knight picked up two fouls in the first couple of minutes, but he's still playing with only two. Patty on the fall away. <laughs> MacArthur skied for that rebound. Eric DeHart. Shaw for three. Santa Barbara, 45 all. Often. Out to Rossum for three. That's night. Patio. Patio is fouled by MacArthur, and MacArthur can't believe it. Richard Robinson back in for UNLV. Well, they've done the effective thing. They've got the crowd in the game, and that makes the Gauchos, I think, play a little tougher defense. Augman, with those long arms, is handling the ball outside, misses, but with those long arms, controls his own miss. And look at no hesitation on the three-point shot. Just fired away. The foul on Eric MacArthur will be his third. We have 13 and a half minutes left. The game tied at 45, and this place is up for grabs. If you could combine the world's best cars into one car, you'd probably want a premium gasoline that lets it perform its best. One that controls deposits while cleaning intake systems. High-octane Chevron Supreme with Tecrolene cleans not just fuel injectors, complete intake systems. Chevron Supreme delivers high performance no matter what car you drive. Chevron Supreme. There's a free-spirited little animal whose territory is constantly expanding. It's the Ford Bronco 2. Making tracks in remote watering holes and lush feeding grounds. Clawing up mountain trails with V6 power to go where the herd gathers. And Bronco 2 switches to four-wheel drive when it's on the scent of off-road fun. The Ford Bronco 2. Its territorial range is bounded only by imagination. Now, during Ford's leadership celebration, get a $500 cash bonus on Bronco 2. How to shave a giant. Avoid big trouble. Use the Gillette Good News Plus Disposable. It's got the Lubra Smooth Strip. So the comfortable shave for a giant is... This little guy. Good News Plus. From Gillette. The ninth Annual Emmy Awards for Sports are finally coming to TV. And Raycom Sports and Entertainment is pleased to bring you this exciting evening celebrating the accomplishments of sports television. So join us April the 19th at 8 o'clock for the 9th Annual Emmy Awards for Sports. Check your local listings and check your local shooting. Starting to turn into a three-point contest, and Santa Barbara's doing awfully well here in the second half in that contest. Patio has made six three-point baskets. Brian Shaw, five. I'll tell you what, though. You get into a three-point contest with UNLV, I think you're going to come out second best in the long run. Patio at the free throw line. Breaks the tie. It had been a good run by Santa Barbara. The Rebels came out and took an 11-point lead at the start of the second half. Santa Barbara, a 17-6 run against UNLV. That is silenced, though, by the pair of free throws by Patio. 47-45. UNLV. the man-to-man -man defense is UNLV. Well, it's 
see what Santa Barbara can create against the man-to-man. -man. Shaw glides in and doesn't score it. Bass Knight simply rustles the ball away, traveling on Bass Knight. Bass Knight had wrestled the ball away from Shaw, but in doing so, picked up his pivot foot. Almost got himself a technical, too. I thought it, maybe he was fouled. They were all over Bass Knight right here. Ten turnovers by UNLV. Oh, he traveled early, but the call seemed to come after that. I thought he had his pivot foot down after that. 47-45, UNLV, a tie game! Derek DeHart! The foul is on Patio. And for Patio, his third personal foul. Fouls are starting to become a big factor. MacArthur for UCSB, he's got three fouls. At the free throw line will be Carrick DeHart, a 74 percenter on the season. He has scored 13 points today. Jerry Tarkanian is taking Jarvis Bass Knight out of the game. I think he's going to let him cool off a little bit. Santa Barbara takes a 48-47 lead with 13 minutes left. James, he's got four fouls, and the foul on Stacy Augman of Vegas. Augman picks up his second. In this half, five fouls against each team. Santa Barbara, 48, UNLV, 47. Victory here in UNLV could be number one, first of the week, number one of the nation. The heart. Yeah. It's the three pointers. It's killing Las Vegas. 51 47 Santa Barbara. The heart with 17 points. James has it twice on it. Elliott down to Brian Shaw. Shaw off to the heart. Yes. Yeah. The 3 47 Santa Barbara. 12 minutes to go. Patio for three. Follow up. Yes, underneath is Rossum. Clint Rossum. 53 49. But moments ago, that six point lead by Santa Barbara, the Gauchos' biggest in the game. Not noted for their second half. They're really pouring it on this afternoon. Santa Barbara 53. University of Nevada, Las Vegas, 49. UNLV, number two in the nation with a 20 and one record, nine and one in the league. Santa Barbara, 15 and four, seven and three in the PCAA. Lost 16 straight for this team in Las Vegas. Now they're trying to beat him for the second straight time. Nice pass to MacArthur. Oh, he missed the shot underneath the foul of call on Rossum. Maybe that's the reason MacArthur missed. But what a pass by Shaw. That it was. Shaw may have had a shot himself. First foul on Rossum. Augman comes out for UNLV. The way Santa Barbara has got back the lead is with some brilliant defense. What that creates is some turnovers. And that creates some fast breaks and, as a result, some easy hoops. It's tough defense that's bringing Santa Barbara back, along with, obviously, the three-point shooting. Of all of the guys Gary Pym would like to have on the line, Eric MacArthur wouldn't be the guy. MacArthur is 0 for 3 at the line. Santa Barbara, 8 out of 14 at the free throw line. 0 for 4 for MacArthur. He just can't make a free throw, and Rossum has it for UNLV. The Rebels trail by 4, 53 to 49, with 11 minutes left. Wisely, Gary Tarkinian has Jar Jarvis Bass Knight back in the game. Richard Robinson. Snatched away by Shaw. Shaw on the way, rejected, and a blocking call. Called by referee Tom Finkin against UNLV's Gerald Patio. And that, for Gerald Patio, will be his fourth. Patio 
can't believe it. Bad shot by Robinson. And Shaw goes, tries to go coast to coast. Does Patio foul him? Patio's backing off all the way. I'm not sure that's a good call. I tend to agree with Daryl Patio on that one. But that happens sometimes when you play on the road, I suppose. Shaw has 16 points. Shaw is a good free throw shooter, 75%. 54 to 49. And Keith James getting ready to come back in. Patio is going to go to the bench for a while. And James uh, limping a little bit as he goes out there. I don't Remember, think, he was yeah. hurt right at the end of the first half with a sprained ankle. They've got to tape very tightly. Shaw doesn't get that second free throw. Rossum off to Carl James. 54 to 49. And the foul against Eric Buck Arthur. And that's his fourth. So the foul's really becoming a factor here. Now Jerry Pym will insert Mike Doyle into the lineup. MacArthur will go out. MacArthur is really new to the game. When you have three fouls, you don't do what he did right there. It was not on Shaw. It was on the man to the left. Hawkman back in. Rossum will go out. Both him and Tarkanian making a lot of substitutions yeah. in the second half. Now, Santa Barbara has to be careful. They think, oh, gee, Gerald Patio's out of the game. We're okay. Not that way with UNLV. They are long and strong on the bench. they got a lot of guys who can hurt you. I think a lot of teams get lulled into complacency when one or two guys aren't performing for the run of Five-point lead for Santa Barbara at 54 to 49. Carl James puts it up. Rejected by Westbell. Westbell down to Elliott. Elliott. Great play by Westbell. Great block and great pass. And the only reason Westbell is playing is because Gary Gray has four fouls and he's on the bench. Inside the back side who runs into best. And the foul is going to be against Westbell. The basket by Fast Night. Oh, that one could have gone either way. It's one of these games where every play now is starting to become uh, real critical. Santa Barbara getting some fast breaks, but of course it was all set up before that by, by Westbell. Westbell. Yeah. And Bass Knight will be at the free throw line. He's got 14 in the game. Oh, this is interesting. Patio is going to come back into the game. Ten minutes left, and he's got four fouls. Bass Knight makes it 56 to 52, Santa Barbara. Patio is in, going out, limping noticeably is Keith James. So Patio, who today has scored 24 points, back into the game with 10.09 to play with four fouls. Well, UNLV is going to go to a zone, so that'll help Patio, and he, he can maybe relax a little bit on defense, not commit that fill. Westbell along the baseline, out to Derek DeHart. Shaw is open at the free throw line. To the heart. 56 52 Santa Barbara. Brian Shaw threw it away. I don't think Doyle knew that the ball was coming his way. He started to cut toward the basket, and the pass was too tall for the 6 8 Doyle. Nine turnovers by Santa Barbara, and Jerry Pym calls for a timeout. 9 39 left in the game. We'll be back after this break from our local station. Free. Three months free. Select TV's three months free offer. Enjoy three months free during your first year of Select TV. You'll see Peggy Sue Got Married, Little Shop of Horrors, Golden Child, Children of a Lesser God, plus the world champion Lakers basketball. For a limited time only, get the best for free, only on Select TV. Call 1-800-448-4000 now. <laughs> 
Big deal for a few bucks. You can now own a complete acre of California pines. And it's one of the greatest vacation buys you'll find anywhere. Just $790 down and $89 a month. And you and your family will own a full private acre in one of the loveliest settings in America. It's the kind of vacation spot most people look forward to year after year after year. For complete information, call 1-800-548-2020. That's California Pines, 1-800-548-2020. Santa Barbara has an eight and three record at home, but those three losses have all been in league play. And that is like rubbing salt in the wound for all of the uh, Santa Barbara fans. It's in their minds, too. They know a lead here at home really means nothing right now. Normally, when you get a lead at home, you just pull away. But uh, Santa Barbara players need to win the Portland here. Santa Barbara hasn't had a double-figure lead yet in this game. That's right. Funny thing, too, about Santa Barbara is the fact that whenever they make more turnovers than the opposition, they win 95% of the time. I thought it was interesting that Jerry Pym called that timeout. Brian Shaw is usually a very calm and relaxed looking player out there and Shaw got real excited last time he got the ball and threw the ball really wildly and I think Pim said gee that's not like Brian at all my team's getting excited I got to call timeout and settle him down at the end of the game we'll be picking our forward player of the game and we have a whole bushel of candidates for this one such as that man Jarvis Bassnight 56 54 he always seems to come up with a big basket at the right time doesn't he doesn't he though I'll say Shaw to Doyle. Doyle off to Westbell, and he's stripped of the ball. I think Santa Barbara was guilty of overpassing. No question. Doyle had it all the way. Westbell doesn't have the quickness of some of the other players. Doyle should have gone. Oh, he could have gone up and drawn the foul. And Westbell uh, just waited too long. And Augman stripped him of the ball. 56-54. This shot by Santa Barbara's Brian Shaw, and we've got a foul against Santa Barbara. Well, they're starting to lose their momentum a little bit. I'll tell you, they lose, uh, they miss Eric MacArthur right now. Shaw just shot that too long. He's, uh, he, is, he is excited. He's wound up. Three fouls on John Westbell. 56-54. And Robinson will go to the free throw line for UNLV. Richard Robinson, a 6'10 senior. Not a very good free throw shooter. 46% on the season. In fact, he's terrible at the free throw line. <laughs> Rebounded hard by Elliott. Still a two-point lead for Santa Barbara. 56-54, nine minutes left. Carlton Davenport for Santa Barbara. Being hounded by Carl James. Ryan Shaw. Patty Owen James, remember, playing with four fouls. It's a steal by Robinson and a foul whistled against Mike Elliott. When they go to man to man like that, I would go straight to whomever Gerald Patio is guarding. The guy can get an open shot. Patio let him take it. Two fouls on Mike Elliott. Santa Barbara had a seven point lead at 56 to 49. But now the Rebels have had five unanswered points. And Carrick DeHart will come in, replacing Mike Elliott. DeHart is wearing a bandage on his right hand. He had his index finger bent back a couple of weeks ago. Modern than shooting somewhat. Robinson. Carrick DeHart. Over to Brian Shaw. Santa Barbara 56, UNLV 54. They have been getting their baskets either in three-point range or on fast breaks. And when they're in their set offense, Santa Barbara has not been that effective. And that's what they've been in here the last few times now. Stan Stewart, Jerry Pim's assistant, holding up a card, setting up the play. Knocked away by Carl James. Out of bounds, Santa Barbara. This game sold out for weeks. Capacity here at the Campus Event Center is 6,000. I tell you, I think they got more than 6,000 in here. There's not any room at all. It's an announced crowd at 6,000. Maybe closer to 7. 56-54. They only got 7 on the shot clock. I don't know if they know it. 
Ricky Hart releases it. Doesn't get it. Loose ball. Here comes Patio for UNLV. That's night and Patio have had 41 of the 54 points for the Rebels. Patio misses that three-pointer. Follow up by Bastide. Blocked nicely by Westbell. Jump ball is the call. Alternate possession. Out of bounds to UNLV. Gary Gray comes in for Westbell. The change for Santa Barbara. Well, looking at it again, I think it was a very good call, too. Bass Knight really upset. Assistant coach Ralph Reed out telling him, Jarvis, take it easy. It's okay. We still got it. And the now MacArthur is coming back in for Santa Barbara. Rossum for UNLV. Hoffman will go out. Doyle for Santa Barbara. MacArthur has four fouls. James misses the shot. Booby James. Santa Barbara somehow, someway, still holds on to a two-point lead. 56 to 54. But they've been living on the edge. Carlton Davenport. Gary Gray down low. To the right, Eric MacArthur. The opposite side of the free throw lane. Shot clock is down to 15. Santa Barbara wants to take some time off and make sure of the shot. Shaw. Shot clock is down to six. MacArthur fires up the shot. They didn't know what time was left. They've really lost their momentum offensively. I wouldn't be surprised to see Pim call a timeout. They're lost out there on offense. 56-54, Santa Barbara. And now UNLV throws it away. Is this a pressure-packed game or not? Gary Pym wants time out. I don't blame him. I think Tarkin would like one, too. <laughs> He's not going to object to that. 6.46 left. And now this brief timeout for PSA and Hertz. Travel for PCAA basketball telecasts arranged through PSA. Nobody serves California like California's airline, PSA. Ground transportation arranged through Hertz, selling cars throughout the West at great low prices. Check the classifieds for a convenient location and let Hertz put you in the buyer's seat. And right now, the University of California, Santa Barbara, in the leader's seat, 56 to 54 over UNLV. Turn to Unical 76. Hi. Because while other companies are getting rid of their full service, 76 still has it. When trouble finds you, turn to a friend. When you buy a Volkswagen Jetta, you get a German-engineered road car with generous room and a long list of standard features. You get a car that's fun to drive. And for a limited time, you'll get the special monthly lease price on the best-selling European nameplate in America. Hurry and lease a Jetta from stock or order one today, while our top line has an even better bottom line. Six minutes, 46 seconds left in this one from Santa Barbara. And next week, we'll be up at Selen Arena. We'll see a lot of red next week. The Bulldog fans will be out in force. Another sellout crowd at Selen as Fresno State goes against New Mexico State. The Bulldogs won last night at Selen by that score. And that is our game next Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock along the Raycom Network. And our director, Mike Ireland, will be there. Our producer, Mike Beck from Seattle, will be there. And Ernie Sparger from Las Vegas will be there. So we've got a crew from the West for the Raycom PCAA Game of the Week. And we've got a great one here, 56 to 54. I don't know how Santa Barbara's been able to hold on to the lead, but somehow they have. Yeah, both teams are kind of stalled here because of the intensity and pressure and uh, importance of the game, actually. Inside to MacArthur, there is the shot by Shaw. Not there. Chase.
chased down by Bassnight who puts it back in the play, but he stepped out of bounds. Good effort by Jarvis Bassnight. But he stepped over the line. Jarvis going to come right at our cameraman a little. Whoops. Lands about three rows up into the stands. Might have set a long jump record. Out of bounds to Santa Barbara. The Gauchos 56-54. Dre in deep trouble. Half-court trap. They dividends again. Trapping defense by UNLV has been so successful. 56 to 54. James to Bass Knight. Back over to Carl James. James pops. Doesn't get it. And the ball is grabbed off by Brian Shaw. And again, UNLV comes away empty. Santa Barbara leading a charmed life right now. Yeah. Playing really good uh, defense, positioning and rebounding, too, giving Las Vegas only one try. Five and a half minutes left, Santa Barbara 56, UNLV 54. If UNLV wins this game, they could go and become number one in the nation. The foul is on Patty, oh, he's gone! Oh, and do the students love that? They're almost out on the court to congratulate Patty. Clark's seen it before, he knows what he's got to do, substitute. with five minutes and 20 seconds to play. And Gerald Patio scored 24 points today. I'll tell you what, you can't blame the man for not trying, can you? No. He played a brilliant game offensively. First game he has fouled out of all year. And he was just going for the ball. He was just playing hard defense right there and just got a little carried away. And Patio's shooting was outstanding today. In the first meeting, won by Santa Barbara, 62-60. In early January, in Las Vegas, Patio was 1 out of 13. But he came back with a great effort today, 24 points. Shaw at the free throw line. Doesn't get it. Last night has it. Interesting part is that Patio came into the game averaging less than two fouls per contest. So Anthony Todd is filling in now for the foul out Gerald Patio. And it goes to Augman. Back out to Carl James. He will hit it from there. He can, but he can't do it. And Davenport is fouled by Augman. Again, I repeat, excellent rebounding by the Gauchos, giving Las Vegas only one try. Wide open shot. Usually they hit that. The boxing out, and even little Carlton Davenport's in position to get it. Davenport has been able to make his free throws. Seems like we've been on 56-54 since about 10 this morning. That's right. <laughs> Davenport. 57-54. Carlton Davenport, a six-foot junior guard from Santa Monica High School. 58-54. Santa you? Barbara. Santa Barbara's in great shape. Patio fouled out of the game. They got the lead. Jerry Tarkanian, I think, wants time out. Toss awesome. him over to Altman. Carl James. Remember, Keith James is on the bench with a sprained ankle, which further limits the availability of Tarkanian's bench. Knocked away by Davenport. Shaw brings it up for Santa Barbara. Four-point lead for the Gauchos. 58 to 54. There's only one team in the PCAA that has been able to beat UNLV twice in a season. Bill Mulligan, UC Irvine two years ago. Jerry Pym has a chance to duplicate that here this afternoon with UC Santa Barbara. But a lot of time left over four minutes. Davenport in trouble. Hoffman all over him. Gets the ball over to MacArthur. He scores it. Listen to this crowd at Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, 60, UNLV, 54. Oh, no, no, no. 
In a battle drill, you need horsepower, firepower, people power. That's teamwork. Move and take, back front, shoot down. This team uses a computer, thermal sight, laser rangefinder. We win, the whole tank wins, the whole team wins, not just one person. Find your future in the Army! The new Volkswagen Fox is a lot of car for the money. For instance, a powerful 1.8 liter fuel injected engine is standard. So are power front disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, and four wheel independent suspension. Now we could have done what some did, cut the standard features and offered less car for less money. But we'd never pull a stunt like that. That isn't the Volkswagen way. 1988 Fox. Only 62.90. Well, a Santa Barbara fans can smell it. They're so close. Four minutes to go. 60-54 Santa Barbara. But a six-point lead against UNLV, that's not much. I thought the Gauchos were in trouble. Running down the clock, they got everybody over there crowded, and all of a sudden, uh, one long pass, and they've got an easy move. Now, Shaw and DeHart have scored 36 of the 60 for UCSB. And Bash Knight and Patio, Patio since calling out, the one-two punch for UNLV. Great efforts by the four of them. Todd scores it. Nice turn by Todd. Got his shoulders square to the basket and put it in like there was nothing to it. It's a four-point lead for the Gauchos of Santa Barbara. Gary Gray with four fouls. And uh, Eric MacArthur with four fouls. Carl James has four fouls for UNLV. Clock shows three minutes and 33 seconds remaining. One thing you've got to fear if you're Santa Barbara, they're trying to eat up the clock now but they're just losing their momentum offensively. Foul is on fast night. That is only his third. Yeah, that may not hurt him. That uh, sends the wrong guy to the free throw line as far as Santa Barbara's concerned. Gary Pimps probably saying he's got to make one. The law of percentages that will catch up with MacArthur. Long overdue. MacArthur at the free throw line today is 0 for 1 for 5. Las Vegas. Keep this in mind, always seems to find a way to win the close ones. Santa Barbara has really struggled here at home, hanging on the lead. That wasn't even close. Santa Barbara, 11 out of 19 at the free throw line. And MacArthur is one out of six. Every time down, I'd follow MacArthur. Yeah, that's why I say that wasn't that bad of a play. 60 to 56. Santa Barbara. There's MacArthur. Lost the ball on the carry, and he is fouled. It'll either be on Augman or Bass Knight. It's on Stacy Augman, his third. <laughs> I, I thought Santa Barbara lost their momentum when they took MacArthur out of the game when he picked up his fourth foul. And I think because of his great jumping ability, he can play at a height or a level with these UNLV players, and he's very important to the Gauchos. Can he make this free throw? Yes! My goodness! <laughs> Almost the biggest roar from the crowd today. That's the tough one. This should be a piece of cake for MacArthur, but maybe not. 61-56. Nope. Shaw gets it out to Davenport. Five-point Santa Barbara lead with three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Augman comes up to challenge Davenport. Davenport sees a little opening but thinks better of it. Must take some time off of the clock. What advantage Santa Barbara has. They've got a lot of good ball handlers out there. I say that as Derrick Hart loses it. <laughs> yep, no, it, he didn't lose it. It was called a jump ball by Chuck Camuso and altered his possession. Yeah, that's a break for them. We'll give the ball out of bounds to Santa Barbara. What he did was he got the ball away from his body, Mike. He put it down there away from his body, and it was very easy for the defensive player to do that. Now, Jerry Pym will get MacArthur out of there because he knows that UNLV will try to foul him. Gary Gray. Mike Doyle is in for MacArthur. They've really lost their offensive uh, thrust right here. Gray had a wide opening to the basket because no coach says we've got to run time off the clock. Eric 
DeHart. 2.45 to play. 61-56 Santa Barbara. Carlton Davenport. Davenport along the baseline. Kicks it out there. Is Doyle. Beautiful by Carlton Davenport. Beautiful play. He set the whole thing up. A seven-point lead. Santa Barbara. James from outside. Carl James in and out. Tip in. I don't know whether Todd got it or Altman. 63-58. to 58. They will give the basket to Anthony Todd. UNLV isn't finished yet. It's only a five-point. Davenport. Nobody picked up Davenport. 65-58 Santa Barbara. Well, they forgot all about little Carlton Davenport. Todd from out front. Augman on a follow, but I don't think they're... Yep, they're going to allow the basket. Sure. Sixty-five, sixty. They do allow the basket. Last time down, they get the offensive tip, UNLV, something they had not been getting in this, the second half. Augman will go to the free throw line. He was fouled by Brian Shaw, only his second. Still very much in this game. 152 left, and Tark is chewing on that towel. Hoffman misses the free throw. Gary Gray has it, and a foul against Anthony Todd. And Gray is only a 68% free throw shooter. He is a freshman. Now the pressure is on Gray. And Shaw has his arms cradled around Gray. Tell him, you're going to make it, big guy. Yeah, and Gary, you're not going to miss this, are you? Just play like you're in your backyard. There's nobody watching. There's no importance. No, <laughs> none at all. 65-60. Don't forget, next, that's the fourth foul on Todd. Next Saturday, Fresno State, New Mexico State from Summit Arena. One o'clock along the Raycom Network. Gray has only two points. Didn't get the free throw, and Bashnight has the ball for UNLV. 65-60. Inside to Todd. Todd puts it up, doesn't get it. Comes out to Davenport. Davenport. Passes over to Doyle. Doyle underneath, there is DeHart. Yes! Now they gotta go to the three-point shot. James for three, puts it in. Booby James, 67 to 63. 115 left in this game. Four point lead for UC Santa Barbara. Timeout from the Campus Event Center. knows how your skin got sensitive but if it is try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other Gillette foamy for sensitive skin Fresno State New Mexico State from Sullen Arena in Fresno next Saturday hope you'll be able to be with us and uh, two weeks from today we've got UNLV in San Jose State and in three weeks from today, UNLV and Fresno State at Selen Arena. And other four words, weeks from today. In other words, we got some good ones. Yes, indeed. And this has been a good one. UNLV opened up an 11-point lead early in the second half. But doggedly, Santa Barbara kept chewing away at that lead. And then they got it tied. Santa Barbara's biggest lead, seven points at 67 to 60. Right now it's 67-63 with a minute and 15 seconds left. Mike Walden and Lynn Shackelford from Santa Barbara, and this place will explode if the Gauchos hold on to win it. 
Davenport. DeHart. He's trying to get the ball away. The foul is against Carl James. That'll be his fifth. Carl James leads with a minute and six. Hurts for a couple reasons. They send the wrong guy to the free throw line, and Carl James is maybe their best three-point shooter they have left in the contest. Carl James, five points in the game. He's the second UNLV player to foul out. Patio fouled out four minutes ago. And Carlton Davenport, who missed a lay-in against Utah State. And Utah State came from behind to win that game here that we had a couple of weeks ago. Carlton Davenport has had some bad moments this season, but this could be a very big moment. Especially down the stretch. In this game, he has been brilliant down the stretch, so this will do wonders for his confidence. And Jerry Pym will insert Eric MacArthur back into the Santa Barbara lineup. Four fouls. Going out is Mike Doyle. And Anthony Todd comes out. Well, they got to get three-point shooters in there. Well, and they've got one in there by the name of Travis Bice, B-I-C-E, wearing number 13 for UNLV. Pretty tough to come in and roll like that. Asking you to come up, pinch hit, and hit a home run. 69-63, a minute to go. Here at the Campus Event Center, Rossum for three. Got it! 69-66. The inbound pass so important to get it to DeHart, to MacArthur. MacArthur is fouled, and that's the right guy to foul. Absolutely. And they really fouled him. They hit him hard. Stacy Augman picks up his fourth foul, but MacArthur, who has made only two out of eight at the free throw line, goes to the line. And I think Jerry Pym is asking, was that an intentional foul? The officials say no. Believe me, this game is far from over. UNLV keeps popping the three-pointers. They're going to win it going away. And you've got a, a bad free throw shooter in Eric MacArthur at the line. He will shoot the one and one. 69-66. The crowd literally holding their breath right here. MacArthur doesn't get it. Augment has it for UNLV. Inside the fast night. Fast night. Drives, lays it up, doesn't get it, and MacArthur has the ball. Traveling on MacArthur. 33 seconds left. I thought alternate possession would have been the appropriate call, but it still would have gone to UNLV if that were the case. Good rebound by MacArthur. Now we go back to live. 30 seconds left. Vice with it. Travis Bice for UNLV. A sky shot, no good. Pick it down by MacArthur. And the foul call sending MacArthur. Who else to the line? What did MacArthur say? The general, I shall return. And MacArthur is returning to the free throw line. I'll give the running Rebels credit. They're fouling the right guy. I thought the shot was blocked. At any rate, it was an air ball. And they wisely just jumped on MacArthur. The foul is called against Stacy Ogman. And he is talking and uh, having a good time with MacArthur. I don't think that's appropriate, and neither does Jerry Pym. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'll just leave him alone. He's doing well on his own and missing him. You know what Ogman probably said to him? Hey, buddy, you're two out of nine at the free throw line. 69, 66, 14 seconds left. He hit it! MacArthur made a free throw! <laughs> now that gives Santa Barbara a little breathing room. A three-pointer won't allow UNLV to tie. If he makes this, they'll take MacArthur out of the game, I think. <laughs> That's enough. I said 14 seconds, there's a bulb out, there's only nine, excuse me, there are 19 seconds left. Oh, Mac you would think MacArthur's just made 20 in a row. He is really smiling and dancing. There are no words that Mike Walden and Lynn Shackelford could add 
to this scene. This broadcast has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports. Final score 86 83. Santa Barbara wins. Coming up next is Sports Center. wouldn't only be one they would cheer about they'd also be talking about this one for a while and you could also read about it this is your brain in the thunderdome any questions <laughs> and it would also be a game where one jerry left tickets for another jerry behind the gaucho's bench this is the first time I walked in this gym and didn't have butterflies anyways. This is a tough place to play. The crowd is really great and they, they, they really support the home team and that's the way college basketball should be. Once the game started, senior Idris Jones would play on the kind of emotion that went beyond competition. You know, losing a family member and, um, you know, I just... I just thank God that he helped me to, to play with a clear mind. I just want to say I love, you know, Michael Robert, and, you know, this game was in memory and dedication to him. 
when Ray Kelly wasn't scoring two of his 13 points, he was adding to his school assist record with 15 in this one. Built for tough as in Chris. Gauchos trailed 42-40 at halftime. It's just a fever. It's the fever in the air, and it's just a great place to be on Monday night. If Jerry was looking for a handout in the second half, he would not get it from one who shot JR, as in Ryder, who threw down 24, but give these Gaucho boys a hand or two. This team is capable, but it's all up here. You've got to think positive, and I'm happy for those seniors because they were very positive and aggressive coming into this game. <laughs> but, that was a but, nice dunk. Hey, about time we got that play to work. That's and why it wasn't it's... even in the movie White Men Can Jump. No, nah, <laughs> no, it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, yeah I, hey, anybody out there who wants to give me, you know, like a commercial or something afterwards, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> I... In the closing seconds, Kelly becomes a rebel rouser, giving the Gauchos a three-point lead. No description necessary after this. a great place to play. Something you'll always probably remember in your life. Nice for the recruits that you brought in here to look yeah, at. Yeah, we have quite a few of them here, and uh, it's kind of nice funny. for them to see this thing, and a few others on ESPN, I'm sure, too. Down his low, his little office room, you know, he has a little trophy case. This one is in his office. It's for my dad. throughout the whole game. They hit 23 of 27 free throws. We had great uh, conviction tonight, no doubt about it. Uh, we didn't shoot the ball as well as we can, especially in the first half. We were 14 for 28 in the second half and made all our free throws and didn't turn it over very much, so we played a good second half. During the second half, the Gauchos would string together several good plays to grab the lead, but just as quickly, the Rebels countered. Oh! He threw that one down. Yeah, I mean, we stepped up to the challenge. Every time they made a run at us, you know, and tried to make a little run, you know, we stepped up and we came and we, back, we didn't back down. You know, we played with a lot of confidence. We didn't let them just come in here and push us around. You know, we pushed back when they pushed us, and, you know, we came out with the victory. Alley-oop to Michael Meyer. It came down to the final seconds of the game. Ray Kelly scored to put the Gauchos up by three. And that's where they stayed after Rebel star J.R. Ryder missed a three-pointer that could have tied the game. Keaton Thomas gives it to J.R. Ryder. He misses. Santa Barbara grabs it and wins the basketball game. This year gave us an up and down season for us, a roller coaster season. And, you know, what better way to get back on top is to beat the best team in the conference, the like top 10 team in the nation. You know, it just felt good. It's, you know, no other greater feeling right now. Apparently, it felt good for everyone as the Gauchos turned away the Rebels, and even if for just a night, they're on top. On this one and puts it out of reach. The Gaucho fans stormed the Thunderdome floor as you'd expect they would. UCSB wins it 78 to 70. More college basketball for you now with the Ohio State Buckeyes. Jerry Kim for Michigan State in his 14th season. Judd Heathcote. Judd Heathcote and his Big Ten champion Spartans. You see Santa Barbara from the. Our officials today, Larry Lembo from Farmingdale, New York, from Cypress, California, Jim Stupin, and John Corio from Linwood, New York, and we're set to go. The Spartans and the Gauchos, Big West against Big Ten, and here we go. And Michigan State will control the tap. Well, what I think uh, UC Santa Barbara has to do is really get back fast on defense against this Michigan State fast break opportunity team. And I think the other key for uh, Michigan State is to go out 
and control their defensive board to take MacArthur out of it. Paul Johnson's going to be on Steve Smith for the majority of the day, Tom, and he already picks up his first personal. UC Santa Barbara, an excellent man-to-man -man defensive team. Particularly on the perimeter. Smith to Popovsky, and they move it back on top. Mark Montgomery, the point guard. Redfield works on MacArthur. And over the back, Stavinga came flying in and was all over Paul Johnson. One of those uh, power forwards from the Big Ten with a leap in his legs. <laughs> So the Gauchos with their first opportunity, and the man that will bring it up, their point guard, Carrick Dahars. He's a good one, a four-year starter. Excellent outside shooter, too. As is this man, Johnson. The Gauchos out here by beating Houston, 70-66. As you can see, they go overtime to beat Murray State. They want to get it to MacArthur in low and do. Foul. So Eric MacArthur immediately picks up his first foul. His first. MacArthur, who had 20 points, 11 rebounds, five blocks, and four steals the other night, but the first time he's in the book today is a personal foul. No score. We played a minute in Knoxville. Smith. Cut off by Johnson, leaves it for Stagenga, and now outside Montgomery. Santa Barbara, you see Santa Barbara, will run on good opportunities, and they'll take threes. But they run this set offense beautifully. Lucius Davis got up in the air, somehow got it to MacArthur. He can't connect, and Gray misses the tip. Back come the Spartans. And Redfield walked with it. First turnover against Michigan State. Other games around the country today. UNLV, the running Rebels over Ohio State. UConn, big on the California Bears, spoiling their return to the NCAA. And Lionel Simmons and LaSalle over Clemson. Here we have no score. Almost two minutes into the action. Carrick DeHart open for the jumper. Here's what Jed Heathcote loves for this team to do. Get it up the court quickly. Nice transition defense over by the Gauchos. They did not really run against Murray State. It looked like uh, they're a little overconfident in that one and didn't have to uh, produce 100%. Steve Smith, Mr. Versatility for the Spartans. Got double team, got open long enough to take the long jump. And Poplowski used the elbow. We've got more fouls than points, that's for sure. No score, 17-37 to go first half. Well, it looks like you, uh, UC Santa Barbara uh, probably has got a little soap in their eyes right now. And not able to sight the hoop, but they have an excellent weak side offense where a lot of action happens off picks. And getting inside like this to Mark MacArthur and very quick down there. So MacArthur's got our first basket of the ball game. Montgomery on top to Hart trying to stay with him. Smith trying to feed it down low. Good defense by Johnson again. Smith wanted to shoot, couldn't find the opening and threw it away. Well, if you're going to defend Steve Smith, you've got to fight through at least two picks most of the time in order to even bother him. And Johnson's going to have a tough job all day afternoon long. And those two are bumping down low right now as Johnson's going to post up down low, try to work around a pick, and there he is. Lucius Davis to the baseline. 4 nothing. Gaucho. Five-man motion offense really does not allow you to double. Stagengo works, leaves it for Kowalski, and he can't hit the shot. They pile up underneath. Tom MacArthur is a real key guy in that paint, ready to block anything. You watch him right there, just swat it on the release. It's Michigan State ball. And on the inbound, Smith for his first score of the day. Smith 
you'll find him any place on the court, underneath, on the outside, and he can hit from any position. And he did the other day in helping the Spartans beat Murray State in overtime. He had six of the points in OT. Let's get pass over to Johnson. They want to get it to MacArthur, and DeHart's going to set it again. Johnson open for the three. As all that motion coming from the weak side, you're constantly in action fighting through picks. Very tough to defense this Santa Barbara ball club. And another offensive foul, Tommy. This one's going to go against Redfield, and the Gauchos have a five-point lead with 15.52 to go first half. Not long ago, Toyota... Jack mentioned having won 13 of their last 14. They were beaten by Arkansas in the Southwest Conference Tournament, 96-84 still. An excellent team, 25-7. They were 13-3 during the course of the season in their conference and finished second to the Razorbacks of Arkansas and also lost the championship game. But they're the eighth seed. UC Santa Barbara, the number nine seed. And we're just about set to meet the starting lineups for today's lineups. Let's go to Haywood Harris, our PA announcer, and meet the Gauchos and the Cougars. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Thompson Bowling Assembly Center and Arena on the campus of the University of Tennessee for today's first round games in the NCAA Southeastern Regional Basketball Tournament. Here are the starting lineups for the game between the University of California Santa Barbara Gauchos and the University of Houston Cougars. From UC Santa Barbara at forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Santa Barbara, California, number 23, Paul Johnson. From Houston at forward, a 6'5 senior from Houston, Texas, number 22, Chris Morris. From UC Santa Barbara at forward, a 6'9 junior from Granada Hills, California, number 35, Gary Gray. From Houston at forward, a 6'8 senior from St. Louis, Missouri, number 3, Craig Upchurch. From UC Santa Barbara at center, a 6'7 sophomore from South Pasadena, California, number 55, Eric MacArthur. From Houston at center, a 6'9 junior from Guanari, Venezuela, number 11, Carl Herrera. From UC Santa Barbara, guard, a 6'4 senior from Los Angeles, California, number 15, Eric DeHart. From Houston at guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas, number 10, Derek Daniels. From UC Santa Barbara, guard, a 6'7 sophomore from San Jose, California, number 34, Lucius Davis. And from Houston, a guard, a 6'3 junior from Bossier City, Louisiana, number 24, Byron Smith. The head coach of UC Santa Barbara is Jerry Pym. And from Houston, the head coach, Pat Foster. It's the Houston Cougars and the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos. And we'll return with the opening tip-off after these messages. Man for kids with parents. Come on, Ted Joe. Valentine and John Corio. There you see the record for the Gauchos, 20 and 8, and they're called a slash team because Long Beach State losing to UNLV allowed UC Santa Barbara to make the tournament. Houston having won 13 of their last 14, and with a 23 and 6 record, their first trip to the NCAA since the 86-87 season. Carl Herrera and Eric MacArthur will get us underway, and they're the two to watch throughout this game. Southeast region, round one, and we're underway in Knoxville. And the Gauchos.
Nachos will control, and that means Carrick to Hart at the point. Immediately into MacArthur. Rattles it off the board, and Herrera clears it. Houston. You will see the defensive pressure early by both teams. We mentioned that. And you see UC Santa Barbara up there in the passing lanes making it difficult. Upchurch had a shot blocked by MacArthur, but Houston keeps it alive. Shot on the baseline. Good by Byron Smith. A good, look at a good look at MacArthur and what he does best on that exchange. He loves to play that defense on the inside. He averages over three blocks a game. Davis outside. Now to Hart, the point guard. And they work it around the perimeter of the Houston defense. They want to get it to MacArthur, can't find him. Johnson takes it outside. And the Gauchos will get another chance. That Houston defense very aggressive. Santa Barbara having to really work for their offense right now, but that's something that'll work all the time as the Hart carries the three-pointer. So Carrick DeHart has the three-pointer, and the Gauchos have their first lead. Herrera in low, backs in on Gray, triple teamed, and he's fouled. And he took one in the face to boot. Foul's going to be on Davis. He is really good with the ball when he catches it down in the low hole. You'll see him right here. He has that quick step. He turns around right there and three blue shirts around him. He will have two free throws. And he is an excellent free throw shooter. An 80 percenter, in fact. Herrera, first team, all Southwest Conference, both during the regular season and in the tournament. And we've got our first tie of the game. Herrera, the only one in the Southwest Conference with 80 plus. Well, that's strange because of all the good shooters in that conference. You would think in that conference, you would think that there would be someone up there shooting it close to 90 percent. But he led the conference in free throw percentage. Johnson got it to MacArthur. Nice defense by Byron Smith to cut MacArthur off. You see Santa Barbara very patient, though. They know that they can work the ball around that. MacArthur can't handle it. First turnover of the game. He had it in low, but really never found the handle. Well, we mentioned earlier they're averaging 17 turnovers a game, and obviously it's important for them to work not to turn it over, but if the defense has worked to perfection, this is going to be a low-scoring game, and that'll make those turnovers even more important. Herrera works for his turnaround jumper, doesn't get it, and MacArthur pulls off the rebound ahead. The Gauchos push up Johnson's foul as he shoots. Morris got him outside. And that's going to send Idris, or rather Paul Johnson, to the uh, free throw line. You see Santa Barbara will take advantage of their opportunities to run the fast break. They've been pretty patient to this point, but when those opportunities come, they will take it. Johnson on the shot from the corner picked up the foul, and he will have a couple free throws. And again, we're tied. Four apiece. Johnson can put the Gauchos in front. Six-six sophomore out of Santa Barbara. You'll see both teams convert defensively very well. There won't be a lot of easy baskets scored in this game if the defense has worked like the coaches want them to do. And like they've worked all season. And the Gauchos force a turnover in the backcourt. DeHart works for his jumper from 18 and buries it. Two-pointer, DeHart has five. He went through a slump midway through the season, but really got hot the last 10 or, 10 or 11 basketball games. Averaged only over 20 points during that period, so he is on top of his game right now. Gauchos with their biggest lead. They're up by three, and MacArthur with the steal. Another turnover against Houston. They've got a couple. DeHart wanted to get it to Gray and instead brings it on top to MacArthur, and he'll reset it at the point. It's fun to watch these man-to-man uh, -man defenses work against each other. Obviously, you play against it in practice every day, but it's nice to see here. Carrick DeHart on fire early. He's got seven, and it's a 9-4 Gaucho lead. Houston's had turnovers their last two trips down court. 
Daniels got a pick and went the other way, but he's cut off by Johnson. Smith wheels in, got in the paint, had it blocked by MacArthur. Herrera will put it up and score. You'll see Herrera hanging around the offensive boards a lot in this game, but once again, the defensive effort by McCarthy, excuse me, MacArthur down up under the basket really makes a difference. Houston forces a turnover. Herrera with the steal. He's going to work one-on-one -on -one with Gray. Got the hook and got it down. Such a nice touch. Nice touch. So the Cougars go from five down to just a one-point deficit. Now that's the advantage of being able to play that aggressive defense. They commit the turnovers, they force the turnovers, and when you do that, you have to go down and take advantage of it. That's what they've done. Paul Johnson cut off by Morris. Back on top to Davis. Byron Smith really playing great man-to-man -man defense for Houston. Here's Gray's first attempt. Up the front of the iron. Up church. Lost it off his foot and got it back. Smith for three. And the Cougars on the three-pointer of Byron Smith. Back in front by two. It's been a game of runs so far. You see Sam Barber did a good job early, and now Houston coming back because of their defense. And... Johnson made Morris pay for overplaying him as he buried the jumper. Tie game and a foul, blocking foul on the baseline. They're going to pick up Lucius Davis. And that's going to be his second, Jack. As I mentioned, you won't see many uncontested shots in this game. Both teams very fundamentally sound defensively, and in a sound defensive Theory, you don't give up the easy shots. So with 15.06 to go first half, we're tied at 11. Time out on the floor. We'll be back. Mark and Rennie and little Lindsey are a young family. MacArthur really doing a job. You see those offensive rebounds. He must have four or five of those. And the points from those, 10 points for UC Santa Barbara. MacArthur, in fact, does have four rebounds. Four-point lead. Gauchos can run it to their biggest cushion if they score this trip down. They're shooting 47% from the floor. Davis off the glass, no good. And Houston, with back-to-back -back turnovers, make it three turnovers in a row. The last three trips down. Aikens takes it all away himself, and he's fouled. The quickness of this UC Santa Barbara team defensively is just unbelievable. You'll see Aikens go to the basket here, and he picks up the foul. Doesn't get the, the roll on the shot, but all these opportunities come in because of that defensive pressure on the other end. Mickens with the foul is second, and Ulysses Aikens to the free throw line. His first trip to the strike. He's a senior out of Pasadena, California. They call him A-Train, and he's built like one. Oh, boy. Perfect name. Missed them both. Tehran cleared it off for Houston. Newcomer to the Cougars lineup. Morris looking for Herrera. Got it to him. Here's Mickens outside. Two-pointer for Mickens, and he's the first Cougar to score other than Herrera or Smith. Well, that's about as open as I've seen a Houston jump shooter. You see Santa Barbara had done a great job defensively to that point. Eric DeHart. Jones outside. Three-pointer no good, and Herrera has this rebound for the Cougars. And now Houston with a chance to tie. Here's Tehran. Did he get away with a push off? I don't know, but he got the basket. Well, he did get away with it. I don't know if it was as bad as it looked. It might have been just a little bit of acting on that, but watch right here. You'll see that big arm, and there goes Gray down. Could it have been that bad? I think it might have been just a little bit of acting. A little bit of acting and a fairly decent left hook, and we're tied at 21. Aikens looking for somewhere to go with it. Finally got it to DeHart. He missed off the glass, and Herrera's got another defensive rebound. 
Daniels pushes it up and takes it from long range. And Houston back in front. Daniels' first field goal of the afternoon. 23-21, Houston. As I say, it's been a game of runs so far. Neither team can really take total control, but when you play great defense, it's, it keeps you in a lot of games. So far, this one's been kind of what we expected. Under eight and a half minutes, first half. Brad Nessler and Jack Gibbons with you from the Southeast Regional in Knoxville, Tennessee. 15 on the shot clock. No good on the three-pointer by Jones, and here comes Houston. Chance to pick up their biggest lead if they score. Houston on a 6-0 run. Make it 8-0. Well, I mentioned earlier, Herrera, he does so many things, and you expect him to shoot it once he catches it in the low post, but Houston doing a good job moving without the ball, and he picked up an assist on that one. Houston's biggest lead, 25-21 Cougars. Feed in low to Gray, works on Herrera. And got a tough shot. He has such nice touch down around the basket. He's had two or three roll in like that one did. He's been their top scorer in the last couple of games, and he has six in this one. And a major pileup in the lane. They're going to call it on Gray, working against Tehran again. Well, let's see if we can find out what happens right here. Tehran is going to just back up a little bit, and there's the push. Gray grabs him across the arm, pulls him down, and he picks up the foul. Timeout on the floor with 7.25 to go in the half. Houston 25, UC Santa Barbara 20 game. UC Santa Barbara trailing the Cougars 25-23. We had a couple of knockdowns, but no standing eight counts yet, Jack. I tell you, either Tehran is a lot stronger than he looks, or Gray is a pretty good actor. You're going <laughs> to see him go flying out of there a couple of times, and it simply didn't look like as much contact as it was. The officials didn't buy it either time, and Gray picked up the foul on that last play. From the east, Clemson and the BYU Cougars tied at 13. We've had several ties in this game, and right now Houston in front by two. Jones clears off the miss by Morris, and the Gauchos can tie. The hard had had a shot in a while after getting off to a real quick start. See if the Gauchos try to find him and get him involved in the offense again. He won't get a chance that time for Jerry Pym. You'll see Jones just lose his footing right there and slide right to the floor and commits the turnover. You see Santa Barbara with their fifth turnover. Under seven minutes to go first half. Houston by a pair. Smith. Jump ball, possession arrow goes to Houston. Nice defense by Carrick DeHart, as first he made a play on the ball and couldn't get it, but then got back to stuff the shot. DeHart had the opportunity for the lay-in on the other end. Watch right here, he's going to make a great defensive play. They called the a jump ball, but he wanted the no call on that play because he saw the basket and no one in between him. Morris to Upchurch, who rambled in there, and he's going to be called for the foul. Well, I think the official away from the basketball will call him for travel before the contact is made. Watch him right here as he makes the move to the basket. There are those steps, so they get him for the travel. And Houston commits another turnover. And so the Gauchos again with an opportunity to tie things up. Houston for the first time in a 2-3 zone. They won't play much of that. They, do, they will not. Here's MacArthur in low. Nice kick out to Johnson. Maybe should have taken that one while he had the chance. Goes right back to MacArthur. MacArthur just can't find it. Gray, the offensive rebound on the score. MacArthur is struggling offensively. You're right. He's not getting the nice bounce under the basket, but as long as they continue to work the boards, they won't necessarily have to make that first shot. Try to go back door to Mickens and turnover. Mickens says to Smith, my fault. There's the offensive board work right here. Gray is going to be the guy that gets the basket right there. He uses the pump fake very well to get the defense off balance and just lays it in. 
And Gray right now is leading the Gauchos in scoring. Four field goals for his eight points. And the points off turnovers in the Gauchos' favor. And there have been plenty of opportunities as Houston right now has double figures in turnovers. They've got 10. And we're tied at 25 with 5.40 to go first half. Houston with this 2-3 zone defense. Obviously just wanting to throw something at UC Santa Barbara, make them think a little bit. Nice skip pass to DeHart, but he missed the long-range jumper, and Mickens will clear it off for the Cougars. I thought they might try to get him involved in the offense again. He got off to such a quick start, and he hasn't scored in a long, long time. He hit his first three and has missed his last four, in fact. And now we've got the officials with a little conference on whether it was over and back, and they will say it is not. I tell you what, I think the official that made the over and back call made the right call. Watch right here as, as you'll see Herrera catch the ball in the front court. Watch. And he takes it over. So the official away from the basketball made the right call and he got overruled. Houston with a break and a chance to score and they almost did it in a rather strange manner. And MacArthur fouls Herrera inside. MacArthur's first personal. MacArthur complaining he thought Herrera pushed off with his arm as he went up for the block. I tell you, as many blocks as MacArthur gets, though, it's amazing that he doesn't get in more serious foul trouble than he does. He's only fouled out of three games this year, and uh, he's a pretty smart player around the basket. He saw Mickens sit down. Calvin Smith has checked in, and here's the top free throw shooter again in the Southwest Conference, Carl Herrera. 6'9", Junior. He's got 11 points to lead all scorers in this one. And it puts Houston back in front, 26-25. He's well on his way to his season average as he has 11, and we're not yet at halftime. We've got five minutes, four seconds to play first half. The second one rattled around on him, but he got it. He has a dozen, and it's Houston by two. He's well on his way to his season high, which is 29 points. His career high also 29, so he's having his way down low. Again, Houston shows the Gauchos that zone defense. Gray kicks it out. The heart was open momentarily. The lob to MacArthur. There's a high percentage shot. You do that every time, you'll shoot a high percentage, but that's the first opportunity. He's been able to work free up under the basket, and that's the way to beat that 2-3 zone with that... Diagonal pass either out or up under the basket. Our seventh tie of the game, 27 apiece. Daniels lost it, last touched by Johnson. You'll see the alley-oop pass right here to MacArthur. He does a good job working behind the defense along the low post to get that pass. On top is Daniels, guarded by Johnson. Feeds into Upchurch. He hasn't been much of the offense today. MacArthur just swallowed oh, that one. Oh, man. Fourth block, Jack. Fourth already for him. And watch how he comes over from the weak side. He times this shot very well and very aggressively goes up for the block. And believe me, the Houston inside people will think the next time they get an opportunity down low. MacArthur's second block individually. Gauchos with four as a team. And here's Daniels outside. No good. The Gauchos will run it down, and they've got a chance to lead. MacArthur, from 14, rattled it off the back of the iron, and Upchurch clears it off for Houston. Smith, who was instant offense early, is quieted down. I'll tell you, the defense for both teams making adjustments. You saw Smith for Houston early, very, very hot. The heart was also hot early, and the pressure just simply picked up on both of those guys, and... They've not been able to get any good shots. Herrera, the outside jumper. Johnson will clear it off. Not the shot he shoots very often. You won't see him pull up from, a, from 18 feet for the jump shot. They're looking for MacArthur. Ian Gray down on the low post. Gray lost it in the lane, but he's fouled from behind by Kelvin Smith. Smith's first foul. And we've got a timeout with 3.03 to go in the half. 
tie ball game, 27-27. Bud Denny Franks really didn't like that call, and he's saying something about the ump's grandmother and his optometrist. Right, Harry. And now the ump said something about Denny's Toyota of Santa Barbara. Oh, now Denny's really mad, and he's saying at Toyota of Santa Barbara, they love making better deals. They have a huge inventory. And that during Toyota's big league event, people can save up to $1,000. On select models. With factory-to-dealer incentives. What? Denny's thrown the ump out. Never seen that. No, Bud. Denny just told him to hurry for best selection. Toyota of Santa Barbara's major league event. With factory-to-dealer incentives up to $1,000. We love making better deals. For a quarter of a century, Harry's Plaza Cafe has been Santa Barbara's favorite gathering place. Celebrities, sports figures, and politicians, as well as longtime Santa Barbarans, have built Harry's into the number one restaurant in Santa Barbara. Harry's famous for its delicious fresh fish, juicy charbroiled steaks, choice prime rib, and a host of old-time favorites. The legendary Harry's Plaza Cafe, famous for the most generous drinks in town. Open every day for lunch and dinner in Loretta Shopping Center. Nature's finest works of the last million years await you at Santa Barbara Stone. Consider the possibilities. Santa Barbara Stone and Masonry Supplies, where you'll find the best selection of stone and brick in the Tri-Counties. Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville in the Southeast Region, Round 1. You see Santa Barbara and Houston tied at 27 with 3.03 to go. You see the Houston defense can really put it on you. And today, you see Santa Barbara shooting 41% right now, Jack. We talked about the defense of both teams and the fact that both teams rely heavily on their defense. Uh, Santa Barbara, they've committed, you see Santa Barbara, they've committed nine turnovers. Houston has committed five turnovers, so indication that both defenses are working very well here early. And we're at the three-minute mark. Remaining first half, Brad Nessler and Jack Gibbons with you from Knoxville. And the Gauchos with an opportunity to lead. Their biggest lead's been five. Houston had a four-point lead at one time. And we've had seven ties in the basketball game. Cross-court pass way too far out as Jones threw that one away. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA and a use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Byron Smith looking to upchurch. Nice defense in low. Rod Davis won't let him get it. And a whistle and a foul. Idris Jones is going to pick that one up. You'll see the drive to the basket right here. Jones will just get the bump very slightly as he goes to the basket. But look right there, number 55. He's right there again trying for another block. Right now it's DeHart, Johnson, Gray, Davis, and MacArthur for the Gauchos. Tehran has just checked back in, as is Mickens, to go with Daniels, Smith, and Herrera. Those are the two fives on the court right now. Houston with an opportunity to regain the lead, and they do as Byron Smith hits his first free throw today. Nine points for Byron Smith, and Houston back in front by two. Once again, I think it'd be a good opportunity for DeHart to get involved more in the offense. There he is for the shot, but, boy, he's really cooled off. He made that shot early in the game, but it's he's been a long five time. Straight. It's been a while since he's scored one. Hit his first three, missed his last five. Daniels works baseline around Dre, got it to tear on into the paint. That shot adjusted a little bit by MacArthur's defense again, and back come the Gauchos with a chance to tie it. He makes you change around so many shots. Of course, that doesn't show up in the stat sheet at the end of the game, but that is a real factor. And keep in mind, Tehran, the guy that took the shot 7-1, right. MacArthur's only 6-7. Outside, Johnson in and out, halfway down on him. MacArthur again, the offensive rebound and the basket. Well, that's where you'll see MacArthur score most of his points, just around the basket. He works 
gets the dirty baskets. He works the offensive boards very well right here. You'll see Johnson put it up from the corner. And look at the blue shirts under the basket. Gray is there. MacArthur is right there. And there's the rebound, the putback. Carrera picks up the foul. And MacArthur has a chance for the three-point play. There's Upchurch, who has yet to score. And he was their leading scorer last year. MacArthur, the career rebound leader. He also is the single season rebound leader. The first rebound he got today put him at 360 for the season, and he completes the three-point play. MacArthur with seven. And it is UC Santa Barbara back in front by two. 30-29. Uh, 30-29, a one-point lead, excuse me. Herrera shouldn't be handling it way out there, I wouldn't think. He really shouldn't be, especially when you have a 6-7 guy as quick as McArthur Gardner. Upchurch is still scoreless. Here come the Gauchos. With just over a minute to play first half. Johnson, all alone, didn't take the three. DeHart will, though. He's missed a half dozen. Well, it's obvious that he's simply thinking about it too much instead of just releasing the ball as he was doing early in the game. Smith open for three. That one goes. That's his second three of the day. And it puts Houston back in front, 32-30. And the shot clock off, so you see Santa Barbara can play for the halftime tie. Eric DeHart just going to hold it out there. A change to the 2-3 zone defense that Houston made about five minutes ago. It really paid off for them. You see Santa Barbara having a hard time getting their key people involved offensively, although it has given up some offensive rebounds. DeHart, jumper, tough one on the baseline. MacArthur, though, got it on the backside, and he was fouled. That's one thing. When you miss a shot, Jerry Pim's team, you just about know that MacArthur's going to be there to try to help out. You know he's going to be around the basket. That's what he does. That's how he makes his living offensively is simply being there around the basket at the right place at the right time. There's a foul on the floor. Baron Smith picks up the personal. Six seconds left. They're not in the bonus, so there will not be any free throws here. So one more opportunity here. Well, they are going to say now that Houston has committed. That is their 17th foul. Okay. 17 fouls. So. Two on Mickens, one on Herrera, one on Morris, one on Smith, two on the other Smith, and that is seven. And so MacArthur goes to the free throw line where he's one for one today. Only about a 60% free throw shooter on the season. And there's what he's done on the boards. And a good chunk of that's been the offensive end for the Gauchos. Eric MacArthur, 6'7", senior. And he has eight points on the day. Come on, Craig! First team, all Big West performer. He can tie things up here with six seconds to go, and he does. Smith's going to check back in because he's a long-range bomber. They'd like to get it in his hands for a chance here at the buzzer. Mickens takes the inbound. Here comes Daniels. There's the last shot of the half, and it's short. And we're dead even at intermission. Pat Foster's Houston Cougars. And Jerry Pimm's Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara have given us a lot of action here in the first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk with the athletic directors and we'll have comments from Dick Schultz and a recap of the first half. And it's been a good one. The end of the first half. It is Houston 32, UC Santa Barbara 32. And we'll be back in Knoxville in a moment. Everyone needs confidence to do their best. That's true for any endeavor, whether it's academics or business, creative arts or athletics. Confidence comes from the support of family, friends, coaches, and teammates. But some people look for self-assurance in the wrong places. You can't get it from a bottle or a can. Crack and other drugs take away the very strength you need to achieve your goals. Have confidence in yourself, not in drugs or alcohol. 
This message furnished by the Jack NCAA. Evans, good first half. I think too many turnovers maybe for Houston, Jack. Other than that, both teams playing great defense, and we expected that. Well, we talked about the fact that it should be a good defensive game, and the team that handles the other team's defense will be the one that wins here. There have been some turnovers. There's been some exciting play, especially around the offensive boards for UC Santa Barbara. It's been the kind of game we thought it would be. MacArthur and Herrera, we talked about them at the top of the show. They're delivering for us right now. Those two guys have been the stars so far. Herrera got off to a great start down around the basket offensively. You'll see him right here. He'll get it close to the basket. He's just been able to turn around and do what he's wanted. Watch right here. He's going to get the putback basket as MacArthur goes for the block, something that he has been very effective at, do effective at doing in this game, but Herrera has, has, has had his way under the basket. You saw MacArthur with the block there. He's got six rebounds. He can score, too. He had a little trouble finding the basket early in the game, but uh, when you get the great lob passes, uh, that this type of shot is going to be a high percentage job for you. Well, although he gets about 16 points a game, really his offensive uh, helps up for this team is not really uh, his value. Where he is really effective is defensively blocking shots and rebounding. That is, is where he really stands out. All right, good game. The eighth and ninth seeds tied at 32, Houston and the Gauchos, and we'll return with more of our halftime activities after these messages. You've got the magic. Dick, you told the membership at the NCAA convention back in January that you were looking for a new model for the NCAA. Why, and what were you referring to? Well, what I was referring to is the fact that uh, there are many positives in intercollegiate athletics, but the point I made that you are what you're perceived to be. And today, if you take a look at the polls, the general public, uh, faculty, professors uh, think that colleges and universities are not doing a good job of controlling their athletic department. So my point was, if that's the case, then that means the model is not working and we need a new model. Another hot topic in the NCAA is restructuring. Where does that stand right now? Well, again, uh, the NCAA always has a lot of committees, and you have to keep in mind who the NCAA is. The NCAA is those 1,020 members that, that make up the association, and they make the rules, and, and, and they make the, the major decisions, and we carry those decisions out for them. So we've had a group of people working uh, over a year and a half now on restructuring, a very representative group of all three uh, divisions and the major interest groups. They'll be giving their report to the council in April, and legislation will come up in, in January. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to come up with. I haven't seen their final report, but uh, such things as multi-division classification, the strengthening of requirements for Division I are, are some of the topics they've discussed. It's interesting now you see a lot of interaction between the coaches and the presidents of the university. I think that's really what you're working towards, isn't it? It is, and, and I think one of the real pluses that came out of the January convention, even though it was a, it was a tough convention and there were some uh, intense floor fights, was that out of that, uh, grew a realization that there needed to be better communication between presidents, uh, conference commissioners, athletic directors, and coaches. And the mechanism is in place now to have that happen. So I think that you'll see things start to move a little quicker and uh, more support for everything that comes on the table. You know, when you talk about an industry, all, every industry in this day and age is talking about cost reduction. Where's the NCA with cost reduction? Again, uh, we have a, a special committee that's taking a look at that, and they'll also be reporting in April, which uh, tells you right off the top that the January convention, the convention will be a, a dynamite one with the reform and cost reduction and restructuring. But I think that uh, what you're going to see is probably uh, a potential reduction of scholarships across the board, uh, limitations on recruiting activities, uh, trying to zero in on some of those things that are very, very expensive, but yet questionable when it comes to cost effectiveness. I think one of the really tough things, too, you talk about season reduction. People just say, well, you know, get the athletes back in the classroom. But it's not that simple, is it? I mean, there are a lot of factors involved here. No, it certainly isn't. And really the steps that were taken in January at the convention in reducing the basketball schedule and, and putting some stricter limitations on spring football is really a small step forward. What really happens and what I think you'll see uh, coming perhaps as soon as next January will be a limitation on the number of hours per week that an athlete can practice during the season. Schools involved in this afternoon's game, Rudy Devilis from the University of Houston and John Kesser from the University of California at Santa Barbara. Congratulations on being here. Of course, you're very familiar with the NCAA tournament as you uh, served at Houston this same position and you saw three of your teams go to the Final Four back in the early 80s. Can this team be that good? 
Well, it kind of is like the 1982 team when uh, a lot of people didn't think we had that great of a team and uh, went all the way and lost to North Carolina with Michael Jordan and James Worthy. Uh, this team plays great defense. Uh, they're great kids with the leadership of Eric DeHart and Carrick, uh, uh, Carrick, uh, DeHart and Eric MacArthur. And, uh, but we're playing a great Houston team today. Congratulations on being here. And, John, when you talk about the NCAA tournament, you almost have to talk Houston. It, uh, excuse me, Rudy. It seems like... They're always there. This is a 17th appearance, and maybe this is the toughest team coming into this tournament, at least as, as far as how hot they are right now. Well, they're playing real well. We had won 13 in a row before we ran into Arkansas in the finals of the Southwest Conference Tournament. Our people expect us to go to the NCAA tournament. Pat Foster is doing a great job with this team. We've got all, everybody back, and uh, so this is kind of a prelude to maybe next year, but uh, it's a fine basketball game. We knew uh, Santa Barbara was going to be tough, and it's a, a two, two great schools and two great schools. Well, Rudy, congratulations on being here. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll be back with more after this. My four years at Alfred University were probably the best experience uh, of my life. I developed a lot of close relationships uh, and it gave me the opportunity to uh, play intercollegiate athletics. I know in business like in athletics, uh, you come back from a setback. Uh, that's, that's really, I think, really what business is. Uh, you don't have a good day every day. You don't want to do it every day. Um, but when you do it, you, you really try your hardest to do it the best, to be the best. And um, those things I learned. Uh, I, le I learned that in athletics. This message furnished by the NCAA. It's the 1990 NCAA Basketball Championship. Brought to you by Rawlings Sporting Goods, maker of the official ball of the NCAA Basketball Championships. By Pizza Hut. Official corporate sponsor of the NCAA. And by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. KCOY TV congratulates the following businesses for sponsoring and supporting the UCSB Gauchos, Santa Barbara Stone and Santa Barbara Business College in Santa Maria and Santa Barbara. Let's take a look at our halftime statistics here between the Gauchos and the Houston Cougars. And right now, you see Santa Barbara having a tough time. They're shooting 37.5% from the floor in Houston at, you see, 12 out of 24, 50%. And the Gauchos going to have to pick that up a little bit in the second half, Jack. Well, they are. Houston got a lot of baskets up under the up in close, and that's the reason why you see their percentage so high. You see Santa Barbara after getting off to a quick start, kind of cooled off down the stretch. Rebounds pretty much the same, and uh, second chance points. You see Santa Barbara with 17s, only two for Houston. Individually in the ball game, MacArthur, Gray, and DeHart, the top three scorers for UC Santa Barbara. So they spread it around pretty well. On the other hand, for Houston, most of it coming from Carl Herrera and Byron Smith with 12 each. We talked about that statistic of 37.5% for UC Santa Barbara and 50% for Houston. When the Gauchos' opponents shoot under 45%, they're 19 and 2. When they shoot over 45%, they're 1 and 6. So they're going to have to play a little better defense on Houston, or they might drop this one. But as we enter the second half, we're dead even at 32 here in Knoxville in round one of the Southeast region. Morris tried for the steal, couldn't quite handle it, comes out of bounds. And the Gauchos again will bring it into the front court with 28 on the shot clock. Kind of interesting that Houston came back into the man-to-man -man defense starting out the second half after having pretty good success in the 2-3 zone late there in the first half of play. Davis outside jumper is a two-pointer. That is his first basket. They need to find some other people to score some points, does you see Santa Barbara. That will open it up down low and give MacArthur some easier opportunities down there. Houston had too many turnovers in the first half, and they pick it up where they left off. That's their 11th of the day. So the Gauchos with 
the initial lead of the second half. Again, their biggest lead in the first half was five. Houston's biggest cushion was four. It's been tight all the way. Seven ties and nine lead changes. Here's MacArthur wheeling in the paint over Herrera. As I say, if uh, you see Santa Barbara can make some shots from the outside, that will open it up down low for MacArthur. He will have opportunities just like that one. 36-32, Gaucho. Daniels leaves it off for Smith. He started hot, and he starts hot here in the second half. Smith has 14. Smith has been the guy for Houston from the outside. He's looked very, very confident in shooting the jump shot. Gray working inside against Herrera. Gets the entry pass, had it knocked away. Last touched by Houston. I think that one might have gone over to Houston had Herrera not tried to pick that one up. You saw the reach in from behind, knocked the ball away from Smith, but Santa Barbara gets it out of bounds. Herrera's complaint was that it was never out of bounds. He might have been right. At any rate, the Gauchos have it. And after the miss, they keep it alive and have a fresh 45 with a two-point lead, 36-34. Johnson trying to get it to MacArthur and does. Well, that's that opening on the inside I've been talking about, and that is what you see Santa Barbara really wants to get out of their offense. MacArthur's got 13 points. Upchurch backs in, got good position, and got MacArthur to follow him as a basket good. Let's see, yes. Upchurch with his first basket, and it's going to be a chance for a three-point play for him. MacArthur doesn't like to call, but watch the pump fake right here. Gets MacArthur up in the air. There it is. There's the foul. MacArthur was saying he was still on the floor, but the continuation gives him the basket and a chance for a three-point play. Got the NBA continuation there, didn't he? I think that uh, is pretty close. I think, though, he was in the act of shooting, and he should be on the line where he is. Uh, Church completes the three-point play, and it's a one-point ball game. Upchurch is averaging over 13 points a game, so Houston very badly needs his points. Gray all alone. From 18, he buries it. And Gray is in double figures with 10. He might, have, might be the most consistent player on this team for UC Santa Barbara. He always shows up, always plays hard, and although he's not the leading scorer or leading rebounder on this team, he shows up to play, really helps this team. Upchurch backed in, and he's going to be called for the offensive foul, and Gray ran into MacArthur, and that's why he's holding his head. Boy, he has been on the ground a lot of this game. He has been knocked around up under the basket. You'll see right here as Upchurch just lowers his shoulder and Gray hits MacArthur on the shoulder. MacArthur is holding on. Watch right here and see if you see MacArthur, see Gray's head hit the body of MacArthur somewhere. Here comes the charge. Boom, right there. there. Those two are roommates. That could cause a squabble later. <laughs> 40-37, 17 minutes to go in the game, and MacArthur has really come out in the second half. Six quick points, he has 15. It's amazing what making a couple shots from the outside, outside does for you inside game, and MacArthur is really, really benefiting from some early shots from the outside by UC Santa Barbara. The Gauchos have matched their biggest lead, and they almost got the steal, but Davis kicked it. And... Alvaro Tehran is going to check back in for Houston. Well, he's coming in there for defensive purposes. You see right here as MacArthur just drops steps and goes to the baseline, comes up with the jam. Morris, baseline jumper is good. Morris has four, and it cuts it back to a three-point gaucho lead. And a slap outside is Derek Daniels. Trying to play the ball, picks up his first foul. 16-22 to play, and you see Santa Barbara. Really up their field goal percentage. Nobody's missed yet. Three-point, Gaucho lead. Houston picks up the steam on the defensive side, but DeHart, for the first time in his last eight shots, drills 
one, and he has nine. And there's, again, the five-point lead for the Gaucho. He's a scorer, and he knows that it's important for him to continue to shoot the ball, as, even though he has not made many. Morris had great position on the weak side for the rebound, and he's fouled by Davis. Well, Davis grabbed the official and said, hey, he pushed me off under the basket. Let's see if you can see Morris. There's the push right there. He had a pretty good argument. He picks up the foul, though, and Morris will have a chance for two free throws. Idris Jones will check back in, and Davis will sit down with those three fouls at the free throw line. Is Chris Morris, 6'5", senior out of Houston, Texas. Four points on the game. Mickens will check back in, too. Darrell Mickens, a 6'5", junior, back into the lineup, and Tehran sits down. Morris' first trip to the free throw line. And that is Houston's first miss from the strike. They were six for six in the first half. And one for one this half before that miss. Morris to try to cut the Gaucho's lead to four, and he can't do it. So you see Santa Barbara with their biggest lead and a chance to add to it after two missed free throws. Gray got open over Herrera. Short on the jumper, got his own rebound, but he pushed off getting that rebound. Gray works very hard, and he was just going for that missed shot. Watch oh, right here. You see the little baby hook right here. It's not going to go, but there's the push off, and he picks up the personal. Time out on the court with 15.36 to play. Our score, UC Santa Barbara 44, Houston 39. Cougars of BYU, a battle of the Cats there. 31-28 in the second half here in Knoxville. It is 44-39. UC Santa Barbara's Gauchos leading the Houston Cougars. You see the time remaining in the ball game. Brad Nessler and Jack Gibbons along with you here in round one of the Southeast in Knoxville. The pace offensively has picked up for both teams, and the reason why is Houston hasn't missed a field goal in this second half. They've made all six of their attempts. UC Santa Barbara, they've made six of eight. Pretty good shooting by both sides. Gray picked up his second foul in a row, and he's got three now. That might bring him out of the line if it does, in fact. And the A-train will check back in. Ulysses Akins comes into the lineup. Gray's been one of the mainstays, 10 points, and he's worked hard in there. I was going to say, he would be a big loss for this team, maybe more than anyone else because he is so consistent. Chris Morris is in a fine job on the weak side rebounds, and he makes it pay off with the basket there. 44-31. Gauchos by three. MacArthur takes it all the way himself. Can't get it. Daniels will clear it off, and Houston now can put a run together and get right back to within one. Houston picked up the pressure full court that time and forced the fast shot. Morris got another rebound in the same spot. Nobody's blocking him out on that side, but there's the turnover. I think Houston has had way too many of them. DeHart, the senior leader on this Gaucho squad. Double team and foul by Derek Daniels. Daniels does a lot of reaching in, and he gets a lot of the, the UC Santa Barbara players across the arm. He's been very quiet in this game. Foul Not had Daniels. a good game offensively, but he has done a good job of running the offense for his team on the other end. Lucius Davis checks in for the Gauchos. And Morris goes out, and Upchurch comes in for Houston. Upchurch with only three points, averaging 13 a game on the season. So you see Santa Barbara's held him in check nicely. Carrick DeHart outside. Got a pick. The give and go back to Davis. And again, Houston cuts him off. Well, Davis missed an opportunity. Probably should have shot that one, but... Johnson alone. Out of 15 on the shot clock. DeHart, long-range jumper, in and out. And Byron Smith comes out of there with it. Here comes Houston on the run. Daniels with a basket. 
and he got leveled as he picked up his fourth point. One of the few times in this game we've seen either team get out on a three-on-two, three-on-one situation, and Houston handled it very well. Both these teams would like to do that, but their defenses, their transition defense, preventing the other from getting out there and running with it a little bit. Transition defense has just been great in this game by both teams. So the Gauchos' lead's been cut to one, 44-43 with 13-20 to play. Nice pass, cross court, Aikens foul as he shot it, couldn't get it to drop, but Herrera got him. And Aikens will have a chance from the free throw line. Second foul on Carl Herrera. You see Santa Barbara has been forced to be very patient offensively, and when you do that, you get good shots, and that time you saw the pump fake, and Aikens will have an opportunity for two free throws. Aikens, a 6'6'' senior. Averaging just under four points a game during the regular season. He's 0 for 2 from the free throw line today. Finally finds it and puts UC Santa Barbara back in front by two. He has that strong body. He works very well in close around the basket. On both. Aikens puts the UC Santa Barbara lead back at three points, as now Gray is going to check back in after sitting down with three personals and getting a little breather. Gray is still trying to loosen that neck up in that collision with MacArthur. He suffered and shaking it around, trying to... Could take him a day or so. Yeah, that was a pretty, pretty good collision. And MacArthur has a collision with Carl Herrera. His third. So now the two big guys for the Gauchos in a little bit of foul trouble. You'll see Herrera here take the ball to the basket. A little jump in that time. Force MacArthur to get him across the arm. Third personal, so both Gray and MacArthur in a little bit of foul trouble for UC Santa Barbara. Here's Carl Herrera, four for four from the line today, 12 points all in the first half, and he's been held scoreless here in the first seven minutes of the second half. Until now. 13 on the day for Herrera, and he's been showing all day long why he is the top free throw shooter in the Southwest Conference. Born in Trinidad, from Juanari, Venezuela. Hits them both. He has 14 for Pat Foster's Houston Cougars. Coach Foster in his fourth year at Houston. 78 and 46 coming into this one. And it's a one point. You see Santa Barbara lead. You see 13 minutes left to play and some backcourt pressure from the Cougars. MacArthur took a seat on the bench. That guy right there, Aikens, checked into the game and you see Santa Barbara immediately commits the turnover. Derek DeHart threw the lead pass and Aikens kind of pulled up and lost it off his fingertips. So now Houston with an opportunity to regain the lead. They want to get it to Herrera. Just can't seem to get it to him. Now they do. He's double teamed. Back out and Dickens will take the long jumper. Well, good ball movement that time by Houston and a good job by Herrera passing the ball back out. The defense did a good job on him, forced him to give it up. Houston's first lead of the second half, Jack, up by one. Here's a two on one. Gray in the paint. Got the roll. Seems like every time he shoots one, it just rolls around on the rim, bounces, touches about everything up there before it falls through. He's got 12 with 12 minutes to go. It's 48-47, UC Santa Barbara. I think Houston understands what they have to do right now. They have to get the ball down low to Herrera. They've been looking for him about every time down, and Aikens comes over the back right here and picks up the foul. Aikens picking up his first personal. Here's Upchurch, turn around jumper on the baseline. An air ball, Gray pulled it down and then was fouled immediately by Mickens. Up That's church three on Mickens. Excuse me. Up, up church complaining that he got hit on the arm. Let's see. Might have got touched early. That one just simply didn't have enough on it. And there's Mickens picks up the foul. 11:54 to go in the game. Timeout on the court with a score. UC Santa Barbara 48, Houston 47. Santa Barbara Stone. Start with quality. 
finish with satisfaction. Santa Barbara Stone, where you'll find the most complete lines of brick, stone, and tile in the area. They followed the teachings of an obscure cult leader in Dallas, thinking it was the path to enlightenment. But why did several of the members kill themselves? We think it's murder, or some species thereof. Everything they did, they consulted her. Our investigation focuses on the dangers of mind control. Inside Edition, we give you something to think about. Thursday at 6.30 on TV 12. When it's time to get help, every hour counts. Call Pathways, the Adolescent Chemical Dependency Program at Goleta Valley Community Hospital. When it's time to get help, every hour counts. Call Pathways, the Adolescent Chemical Dependency Program at Goleta Valley Community Hospital. You see Santa Barbara leading Houston 48-47 with 11.54 to go in the game. You see Houston with one of the few fast break opportunities that we've seen in this game, at least an opportunity, a three-on-one situation right here, and they handle it very well as Daniels takes it to the basket. Got fouled right there, didn't get the call. See the second chance points for UC Santa Barbara, and that's because MacArthur and Gray have done such a nice job on the offensive boards. It's been mostly Herrera and Smith for Houston, and you saw the 13 turnovers, and thus the, the second uh, uh, the uh, points off turnovers been in UC Santa Barbara's favor too. Now Houston with a swarming defense, but Smith's going to pick up his third foul. And they really had Johnson in trouble that time. Smith reaches in from behind, gets him across the arm, but not a real good time to pick up a foul. His third. Smith, the junior out of Bossier City, Louisiana. He's got 14 points in this game. Derek DeHart's been kind of quiet offensively since really opening up with some firepower in the first half. Big guys have done most of the scoring for the Gauchos. Hey, Daniels and Smith, they've done a great job on him, not allowing him to catch the basketball in the position he likes to get it to score points. Really hasn't had an opportunity to square up and take the jumper. There's a nice pass inside and the bucket by Davis. Great movement away from the ball with for the UC Santa Barbara team that time. And once again, they're running their half court offense to perfection. There's a back door. Morris got free. Can't get it inside. Boy, when that guy comes after you, duck on the bench over there oh, if you're one of the Houston trainers. Get out of the way. Here he comes. Watch. That's a pretty big body, and they do a pretty decent job of getting out of the way. I think I would have moved a little bit farther away than they did. Have yeah, Aikens listed at 220. I think he's a little bigger than that. Nice right. baseline move by Daniels. Daniels was six. And again, it's a one-point game. Johnson picked up by Smith, wants to get it in the paint. MacArthur getting a breather, so they don't have the go-to guy out there. And there's a foul in the act of shooting, and so Davis is going to go to the free-throw line. Obviously not a real smart play right now. You'll see MacArthur coming back into the game. He will... Obviously, come in and hopefully get involved down low again for UC Santa Barbara. They look just a little bit out of sync without him in there. Although Gray has done a nice job and picked up 12 points, MacArthur's the guy that they really want to go to in the, the low post to wheel and deal inside. Davis at the free throw line. His first trip to the stripe has four points all this half. And UC Santa Barbara, three for three this half on their free throw shooting. You need every one of them this time of year. The winner goes on, the loser goes home. Missed free throw on the second chance, but Johnson picks up the loose ball. Not 
the Gauchos with a fresh shot clock and a two-point lead. Just over 10 minutes to play in this one. Let's see if they go down low to MacArthur right now. They were having a hard time offensively with him on the bench. They will, I'm sure, look for him down low at least. DeHart turns and his jumper won't go. But there's MacArthur. Missed on the dunk after the offensive rebound. Nice job by Upchurch of hanging tough in there. Boy, what a block by Upchurch that time. Smith got a flying half jump shot. And he was hit as he shot it. And a whistle and a foul. I think it's going to be on Herrera. I think you're right. You'll see Smith go to the basket watch. He's not going to get the foul. Herrera will push Gray with the forearm right there. And Herrera will get an opportunity for the bonus on the other end. Houston over the limit, so Gray will go to the free throw line. 12 points for Gary Gray. 6'9", 248 pound junior, and Herrera picks up his third. So Herrera and Smith and Mickens all with three personals each. Gray has 13 points. We mentioned he's their top scorer for Jerry Pim in the last two games, and he says it's because so many people are worried about MacArthur. He says, that's why I get my opportunities, and he makes them pay. Shot, shot. Good to see him uh, or hear him admit that. A lot of players will say, hey, I've been working harder. I've been doing those things, but he knows that the defensive other teams have been really concerned with MacArthur and with DeHart, that gives him a lot of opportunities on the offensive boards to get some easy ones. Gaucho's trying to turn it up a notch on the defensive end now with a three-point lead. Here's Herrera, the man the Cougars wanted in the hands up. He can't get it on the baseline, but Upchurch picks it up and puts it in. Upchurch is really coming to life on both ends of the floor, working the boards very well. 52-51, just over nine minutes to go. Brad Nessler and Jack Gibbons with you in Knoxville at Thompson Bowling Arena. Round one, Southeast Regional and UC Santa Barbara with a one-point lead over the Houston Cougars. Last touched by the Gauchos. They'll turn it over. Something they've done very little of in the second half. So Houston with an opportunity to lead. Their only lead this half was a one-point lead, and it was several minutes ago. Daniels works in the lane, and they're going to call a foul on Johnson. The hand check is first. Daniels is so quick with the ball. He has that first step. It gives him the advantage every time he decides to go to the basket. And Johnson that time doing a pretty decent job, but had his hand on him and commits the pushing foul. Idris Jones checks back in. One of the all-freshman team members from the Big West. One, one. One. And Derek Daniels at the free throw line. His first opportunity from the strike. You see a 70% free throw shooter on the regular season. He's got six points today. Came out on him. And MacArthur, who else, with a rebound? Seems like we mention his name every time a shot is missed. That's right. Gray on the baseline looking for MacArthur. Going to try to work for a shot himself. Came out and Herrera the rebound. Daniels trying to push it. But again, the Gauchos get back nicely on defense. And DeHart with a steal. DeHart all the way and got it. And a good decision by Baron Smith to just back off and allow him to have that basket. Smith with three personals. Could have picked up another one. We're under eight minutes, and you see Santa Barbara by three. And another steal. 15 turnovers for Houston. UCSB now with the three-point lead. Idris Jones got open on the baseline, and he drilled it. Well, that's a confidence booster for him. He has really been struggling from the field the last 10 games or so. He's been under 10 points in all of those. UCSB has matched their biggest lead. Timeout on the court. They lead 55-51 with 7.26 to play in the game. Where can you find one of them right here as Carrick DeHart picks this one up, drives right to the basket. 
Picks himself an easy two up right there. 15 Houston turnovers on the game. And you see the points that the Gauchos are getting off those turnovers. That's been the story of the game. Up church and it blocked by MacArthur. Boy, it is such a value to have a guy like MacArthur under the basket. He corrects so many mistakes with his aggressive defensive play. Dehart trying to give the Gauchos their biggest lead. He can't connect. And Houston will come out of there with it. Three on two. Daniels is going to have to pull up. Nice job by Johnson on defense. Try the entry pass into Herrera. And MacArthur picked up another foul. And that is four. Watch this block right here by MacArthur. He picks up number four, but not on this play. Six, and, six minutes, 50 seconds left. He is, excuse me, that is, I think he has more than three blocks. We showed him with three right there. But he brings up foul number four. And he will have to be very careful the rest of the way. He will come out of the game right now. Yep. Gray will check back in. So one roommate out, the other one in. MacArthur will sit with four with 6.50 to go. And at the free throw line, Carl Herrera. And he is not a guy that's going to miss very often from the strike. In fact, he can match his season average if he hits both shots here. Okay, we go on this one. A junior college player in 88-89, averaged over 25 points a game. And that's about what he's had in his last six games. Mickens checks back in. Chris Morris sits down for Houston. And Herrera will try to cut the UCSB lead back to three. Finally missed one. So it's still a four-point cushion for the Gauchos. It's six. 40 now remaining in the ballgame. Double team on DeHart. We'll see where UCSB goes now for the offensive punch right now with MacArthur sitting on the bench. They're really running their offense, though, their half-court offense very well. See the sharp passes. Might be more apt to see a jump shot at the end of the shot clock instead of trying to get it in the paint. Idris Jones and Carrick DeHart two guys that can put it in from outside. Somebody's going to have to take one. They do get the entry pass to Gray. He's fouled with one second left on the shot clock. Oh, what a bad foul that was. One second, almost a violation. And you foul see foul Jerry Pym right there, very happy. Watch right here. You're going to see the foul as Upchurch comes over the back. And well, just not a good foul at all. They put on the line for two free throws or an opportunity for two instead of forcing the turnover and having the ball going the other way. On his average, Gary Gray, and about to go over it with the free throw. Gray six out of ten from the field, and he's two out of three from the free throw line. Junior out of Granada Hills, California. Got them both. Fifteen for Gray, and a six-point lead. Biggest margin of the ball game for the Gauchos with six minutes to go. Houston's got to have one here pretty soon. Herrera backs in over Gray. Tough shot, and he got it. And that's the way to get it when you want it. Just take the ball down low to Herrera and let him work his magic as he has done so often in this game. 17 for Herrera, and now the trapping double team. Houston try to scrap on defense to come up with a turnover and try to get back in the ball game with five and a half to go. And Upchurch is going to pick up the foul. His third this half. He is really having a tough time defensively right here, and you see him just simply reach in and tries to draw the charge, but doesn't get the call. One and one, gentlemen. One and one coming up for Ulysses Aikens, who has hit his last two free throws, missed his first two in the first half. Two points on the day. found it here in the second half. Looks a lot better on the free throw, following through very well, and shooting it with a lot more confidence than he did when he missed those too early in the game. Chris Morris had to check in for Houston, and Lucius Davis comes back in for UCSB. So he gets 
try to stretch the Gaucho lead back to six, which would match their biggest margin. 60-54, with now five and a half minutes to go. And Houston desperately tried to cut into the lead. That's a good way to do it. Byron Smith with 16. Good job by Smith, giving the pump fake, getting the defense up in the air, and just simply going in for the easy layup. The UC Santa Barbara defense didn't adjust down into the basket. Remember, the Gauchos playing without their star, Eric MacArthur, on the bench with four fouls. And there's a steal that Houston's been waiting for. They can cut it to two. Might have hurried that shot just a little bit too much. I think you can say Aikens wanted that rebound. Uh, he let everybody in the building know he was going to get that one. On the other end, he tried to go to the hoop, didn't get it. Herrera tipped it away. Gray in the right spot at the right time, twice, and he's fouled. Foul's going to be on Daniels. It'll be three on Daniels. Watch. The good offensive board work by the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos again, and you'll see Daniels reach in right there. Not a lot of contact once again, but the official very quickly on top of the call. MacArthur has checked back in with 4.38 to play. Gary Gray at the line. Has 15 points to go with his seven rebounds today. And he can't buy that free throw. Herrera pulled it off, and here comes Houston again with a chance to cut the Gaucho lead to two. Up Church skips it over to Morris. Houston working it around well. This is a foul on Herrera. He and Gray were going at it, and Herrera picks up his fourth. Well, Gray finally gets re rewarded for hitting the floor as hard as he's done it three or four times in this game. Gets the call finally. He's been on the floor more than the kids with the towels out there, hasn't he? Watch the right side of the screen right here. Watch how he flies out of there. He's going to have a few bruises on the backside tomorrow. He won't care if UCSB holds out of this four-point lead. 60-56. Just over four minutes to play. And a timeout as Jerry Pinn stands up with 25 on the shot clock and says, guys, let's talk this thing over with a four-point cushion. We've got a timeout on the court. UCSB with a 60-56 lead over Houston. MacArthur, the big one there for UC Santa Barbara with four, and Herrera likewise with four. Both of these guys are stars for their respective teams. Morris played for the steal, left Davis open for the jumper, but he came up short with it. Daniels calls the play as he brings it up. And now Pat Foster wants a timeout with the ball in the front court with 3.47 to go. We've got a timeout here in Knoxville. It is UCSB 60, Houston. Herrera backs in on Gray. Drains it. Boy, he is so good with his back to the basket down there. He does a good job of filling the defense and giving what the defense gives and taking what the defense gives up. There's the double team and a nice pass by DeHarty. Got it to MacArthur. Well, that was a nice pass. And of course, Herrera with four personal fouls had to back off and allow him to score that easy one. MacArthur was 17. Four point, Gaucho lead, just over three minutes to play. There's a nice entry pass to Upchurch, and he's fouled as he went to the hoop. Davis will pick it up. Here's that pass from De DeHart to MacArthur, the two guys that we featured in our open, the inside-outside combination that we talked about. And once again, Herrera with those four personal fouls, number 11 right there, just simply had to back off and allow MacArthur to have those easy two points. Craig Upchurch, a 6'8 junior out of St. Louis, right there. We'll go to the free throw line where he's one for one today. Has only five points. Mickens is checked back in for Houston. Upchurch with six. Pat Foster says this is the guy that has sacrificed this year, sacrificed his scoring average, which was right around 19 points last year, and has dipped down to 13 this season. But he says he's a better overall player, defender, rebounder, leader, and he 
hits both free throws, and it's a two-point game with three minutes to play. Yeah, he's doing so much more for this team, as you see Houston with the full-court pressure. He's rebounding, as you say. He's playing much better defense, not concentrating solely on his offense. Here's the leader of the Gaucho Club, Derek DeHart. Over to Johnson. Gaucho is content to use a little bit of clock. They work it down to 20 now on the shot clock. 2.33 on the game clock. MacArthur. Foul as he went to the baseline. It's going to be on Mickens, and that'll be four on Mickens. Well, Mickens just checked into the game. He will come back out. He's in there for defensive reasons, and it didn't pay off the pass loss at that time. Oklahoma, number one seed, leading Townsend State. You saw BYU try to upset Clemson. Clemson, a high-scoring team, averaging about 81 points a game, and they had only in the 40s there with a couple minutes to go. So BYU's defense has done a job. BYU, I'm sure, has done a great job also of taking advantage of that shot clock, using as much of the 45 you seconds bet. as possible. Here's a guy that's done everything today. Block shots, rebounds, 17 points, but he missed that free throw. He'd love to have that one back. Smith. Over to Morris. Houston looking to tie. That's the guy that can do it for you. Herrera had it blocked by MacArthur. Got it back, however. Derek Daniels drives in. Tried to leave it for Herrera. They're going to say it was last touch by Daniels. Boy, MacArthur once again. What a nice exchange that was on that play. Watch right here. You will see Herrera. He's going to try to change his mind and make the pass down low to Upchurch, but... MacArthur right there once again forcing him to change his mind. So still the Gauchos holding to a two-point lead. MacArthur great pass to Davis. He's fouled. And the basket goes. You've seen you see Santa Barbara, especially here in the second half, do a great job of running their half-court offense. Smith picks up the foul as you see the move to the basket. The nice pass from MacArthur. That's great movement without the ball right there by UC Santa Barbara. Byron Smith picks up his fourth and a chance for a three-point play for Lucius Davis. He's got it. All eight of his points this half, and it's a five-point Gaucho lead. Time running out on the Houston Cougars. Smith, nice drive off the glass, and he has 18. And a steal by Upchurch. Back to a one-point game and a foul on Davis. Things just went haywire in the last eight or nine seconds for the Gauchos. It really did, but once again, when you're a good defensive team, you're never out of a basketball game, and I think that is what Houston is proving down the stretch right here. Davis has fouled out as well. That's going to be it for Davis. Gary Pym can't believe his eyes at what has occurred. A five-point lead just a couple of seconds ago is down to a one-point game, and Houston has the ball. 65-64, UCSB with a lead with 90 seconds to play. Here's the inbounds pass right here. MacArthur a little bit careless on that pass, and Upchurch doing a good job taking the ball to the basket. MacArthur once again had to back off and allow him that shot. So Pat Foster with his strategy on the sideline. This timeout gives us an opportunity to thank NCAA Basketball Committee Representative Roy Kramer, Tournament Manager Gus Manning, and Tournament Media Coordinator Haywood Harris. Everybody's done a great job. From UC Santa Barbara, Athletic Director John Kasser, who we talked to at halftime, had basketball coach Jerry Pym and his staff, and Sports Information Director Bill Mahoney. And from Houston, Athletic Director Rudy DeBalos, had basketball coach Pat Foster and his staff, and Basketball Sports Information Director Rick Poulter. We want to thank all those gentlemen for their help and support through this first round game here in the NCAA basketball tournament and it has been an exciting one 65-64 there's the timeouts remaining Davis is gone following out with a minute and a half to play and eight points 
Davis did a great job defensively, though, in this game. He was always called on to guard some of the tougher offensive players for Houston, and unfortunate that he had to foul out of this one. So it's Gray, Johnson, Jones, DeHart, and MacArthur right now for the Gauchos. For Houston, Morris, Upchurch, Herrera, Daniels, and the man at the free throw line, Byron Smith, who has 18 points to lead Houston in scoring. Rattled out on him. Who's going to get the rebound? Smith got it himself. And he's tied up. Possession arrow. Houston still has it. Smith obviously upset with himself. He missed the opportunity from the free throw line. Here's the tie-up right here as Houston does a good job coming up with the offensive rebound after the missed free throw. And Houston now with a chance to go up. Smith open for long range. Upchurch keeps it alive. That guy will always be a scorer. We talked about him making sacrifices. His average is down this year, but he knows how to put the ball in the basket. All 11 of his points have come in the second half, and Houston matches their biggest lead of this half. They're up by one. He Grace Jones. No good, but MacArthur's there. MacArthur with 19. We're under a minute and a one-point Gaucho lead. Smith comes out, and Gray with a rebound is eight. Shot clock, there's only about a second difference. MacArthur almost lost the handle, got it back. Couldn't drop in the close shot, and then he was fouled. Foul's going to be on Upchurch. Well, you really have to give UC Santa Barbara a lot of credit as how well they go to the offensive boards. It seems like every time they need a basket, they've been able to do it because they've been aggressive up under the basket. There is Houston right there dropping back in there to try to knock it away. But watch, they just keep on keeping the ball alive and finally come up with the foul. Jack, everything right now in the Gauchos' favor. They've got a one-point lead, 67-66. They've got MacArthur at the free throw line, and they have the possession arrow going their way. So big, big free throws for Eric MacArthur, the 6'7 senior, who's had a brilliant game. And he keeps right on having a great game. He's four out of five from the line. Houston coming in with a big lineup right here. I'm sure with this group in, they will get the rebound and probably call a timeout. They have some scores on the bench. We'll see what happens. Want to make sure that if MacArthur misses this free throw, they come up with the rebound. MacArthur has 20 points to lead the Gauchos. They're up by two. May have been a lane violation. Well, it was. Oh, boy. And what a for unfortunate break that was. Calvin Smith stepped in the paint. Number 42. And Pat Foster can't believe that. You'll see it right in the middle of your screen. Watch number 42. There he there is. He's in there. And you can bet that MacArthur will make this free throw. Looked like he was on the end of a diving board, and he was about to get wet, and he did. MacArthur came out on him. Herrera the rebound. Chance for Houston. They trail by two. And timeout, Cougars with 21 seconds to go. We're going to keep it right here. Pat Foster will get his troops around him. Shot clocks off and has no bearing. A two-point basket ties this one up and sends it to overtime. A three-pointer for Houston can win it. And they are only two out of four. They've only taken four three-pointers, Jack, and they've hit half of them. Well, they don't put it up very often from out there, but they do have a couple guys that can make them from three-point range. I was very surprised to see Eric MacArthur miss those two free throws in the row. The kind of game that he has had, I felt pretty confident that he could make them, but he's only a 60% free throw shooter on the season, so you can understand that. If I'm Pat Foster, I want the basketball in the hands of two guys with a chance to tie or win this game, one of them being Carl Herrera, their inside postman, who on the day has had... 19-point outing, and the other guy, if it's going to come from the outside, Byron Smith, who has 18. And in close games, Houston normally wins. In games that are decided by three points or less, UCSB is only one and five. Houston, on the other hand, has a winning record when they get down to crunch. 
crunch time. And with 21 seconds to go, you can't crunch it much more than this. 68-66, no, right. Gaucho. I expect uh, Baron Smith to handle the basketball out of bounds. Well, once it comes in on the floor, and of course you want to get the ball down low to Herrera, but the way Upchurch has been coming on the last few minutes, That's I wouldn't right. be surprised if he gets it down low. I didn't mean to neglect him because he's had 11 points this half. He's done a great job down on the baseline. So the five that'll come out for Houston. Morris, Upchurch will throw the ball in. Derek Daniels, the point man. Byron Smith with 18 and Herrera with 19. That's your five. Defensively, it's DeHart, Gray, MacArthur, Johnson, and Aikens. And here we go. Down to the final 17, now 16 seconds. Houston looking for the tie or the win on the final possession. Herrera back into MacArthur with a steal. He's done it all day long. He does it on defense there, and that's going to win it for the Gauchos, it appears. Johnson's fouled in the front court with two seconds left. And Eric MacArthur for Jerry Finn's Gauchos comes up with a big defensive play. We talked about defense coming into this game. The fact that both teams are very aggressive defensive players and it's only defensive teams, and it's only a fitting that a defensive play is the key play down the stretch for UC Santa Barbara. Watch right here as MacArthur avoids the foul, does a good job of keeping his body away from the defense, and he has such long arms, it makes him able for him to reach over and pick that one off. His wingspan, if you will, is 7'3". Most guys that are around 7'1", that's how far they can reach. MacArthur's reach paid off there. Johnson cans it. And unless he misses this, the Gauchos are going to go on to the next round of the Southeast region. Here's the biggest free throw of the season for Paul Johnson. That is going to ice it. The Gauchos are going to win it. They're up by four. Jerry Pym just says back away. But Pat Foster's called a timeout with one second left. And unless he's got a four-point play <laughs> over there in his arsenal, it's not going to matter. 70-66. We'll keep it right here. I think he signaled a timeout to call the timeout if there was a miss on that play. Of course, now with one second left and a four-point lead for UC Santa Barbara, this one is all but over. Well, if I'm Jerry Pym, I keep my gauchos on the bench. All yeah. five guys stand over there and talk to them and let Houston inbound it and shoot from wherever they want. The only thing that could kill them would be a three-point shot and that would go and uh, a foul on the play. And, of course, that's what, what Jerry Pym's telling his team. What do you think the chances of that happening? One of the billion, right? <laughs> I think you would be exactly right to just say, hey, guys, let's just stand over here by me and let's talk and it's over and <laughs> give them whatever they want. How about Eric MacArthur today? 20 points, 11 rebounds. I think he's got four blocks and he had the steal of the season for UCSB. The number nine seeded Gauchos and their backers starting to celebrate. Here's the big play of the game right here. Watch this steal. Watch how he avoids the contact with the offensive player. Keeps those arms high up in the air. Obviously, the officials want to make sure that he doesn't commit the foul. He wants the officials to know that he doesn't. Keeps those arms away and comes up with a huge defensive play. The Gauchos, who some people say backed into the NCAA tournament because of Long Beach State's loss to UNLV in the Big West Finals. And there you see another final. Clemson comes back to win, and here it is all over. And we have a mild upset of sorts in round one. Pat Foster and Jerry Pham shake hands as the ninth ranked, the ninth seed, I should say. Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara have picked off the Houston Cougars 70-66. And that young man, Eric MacArthur, had a whale of a game. What a performance as he led the Gauchos to the victory. 70-66 the final. We'll be back in Knoxville in just a moment. The record, the executive producer of NCAA Productions, is Jim Marcioni. Productions coordinators Gina McNeil and Kerwin Hudson. This game was produced by Jimmy Rayburn and directed by Brian Seif. For Jack Givens, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Thompson Bowling Arena. Once again, the final score, the Gauchos of UCSB 70, Houston 66. This has been an NCAA Productions telecast. This